Hello guys, in this video we will discuss a manual called Leveling Up with Thumbs Up Part 1 to Part 3. A flash of light breaks over the horizon, striking down what's beneath it. The surrounding area is decimated by the flash of light, leaving only destruction and a barren wasteland. One day, gates appeared out of nowhere, and the monster inside of them began to swarm out. Humanity was initially helpless against the monsters, but gradually humans gained special abilities, which granted them the title of Awakeners. After humans started to fight back against the monsters, they also gained rewards. Defeating monsters allows humans to gain reward drops in the form of materials worth millions, making humans blind to greed and turning the objective of survival into a mission of hunting monsters, allowing Awakeners to gain the title of Hunters. Some still stand behind Hunters and help them. People call them Hunter Assistants. Cleaners process the remains of a monster after its defeat. Our protagonist is one of them. Jikyuk Yum belongs to the Resource Collection Department and aims to gain levels and fame. Later, we reminisced, we were young boys eating ice cream in front of a small shop. He sits on a bench with his grandfather, enjoying his frozen treat. His grandfather reassures him that the future will be bright, so he must push through it. He gives him a thumbs up because his name means thumbs up and disappears into thin air. Shocked by the sudden disappearance, Jikyuk runs around the neighborhood to find his grandfather and suddenly hears his voice reverberating, saying the reassuring statement he mentioned earlier. Then everything fades into a small room, where it is revealed that it was all just a dream. The now 28-year-old Jikyuk is doing his daily routine, and as he does it, he psyches himself up that tomorrow will be a great day. He asks himself if he has lived a good life until now. The last thing he remembers about his grandfather is that he stole a frozen yogurt from someone else's delivery bag and was scolded in front of the young Chichik. Moments later, as he was riding the bus, he heard a public announcement that some sections of the motorway had been diverted due to the damage caused by the occurrence of the gate previously. Where the gates initially appeared, many cities worldwide were affected. Now, with the existence of a barrier stone, gates don't appear in the center of the city, allowing people to adapt and adjust to living like they used to. Jikyuk arrives at the third hunter assistant team meeting point and prepares to clock into work for the day. Inside a completed dungeon, hunters left the corpses of monsters for the assistants, which sparked some complaints from the assistant team due to the quantity and quality of the corpses. The corpses' bodily fluids smell horrid and can easily pass through any gas mask. Despite the smell, Jikyuk continues to complete the processing stage of the corpse with ease and high quality, gaining admiration from his fellow assistants. Because of their admiration, a pop-up window came out of nowhere as he worked. It mentions the number of likes he has attained and that a certain unknown god is interested in our protagonist. This surprises him and makes him fumble with his gear and suddenly fragments of light wrap around him, scaring him and leaving his fate unknown. His body suddenly feels so hot that it says something about awakening. His teammates ask him if he's alright out of concern, but he just says it's nothing because he doesn't want them to worry, but his feet are a little numb inside him. They noticed that he was having a hard time, so they advised him not to overdo it and to take it easy because many people are getting injured these days, so they all should be careful. He is so frustrated because there is no need to make a fuss, so he decides to relax his mind because the bodycum, a device equipped on a chest to monitor assistance and prevent them from stealing monster resources, works in real time and is running. He feels amazed by the experience of awakening. He knows about it from the gossip of hunters, but after experiencing it in person, he feels strange. Mr. Jikyuk got confused because awakening usually occur in people in their mid-twenties or younger. But last year, a 31-year-old made an awakening and received the title of Oldest Awakener. Gatu keeps bothering him to check the status window, so his comrades call him out to hurry up the cleaning and go. The government granted numerous privileges to hunters, including immunity, pensions, and even the freedom to own weapons. However, at the same time, there is a sense of duty. If a gate is created within a certain radius around the residence, the hunters are dispatched soon because nothing is free in this world. Mr. Jikyuk didn't finish his eavesdropping when they turned into a different world. His comrades congratulate him for doing a great job. He received a point as it was more sincere, and three points were added as a bonus, so he already has 17 points. Inside his house, he searches for his medicines, but he finds out that there aren't any left. He thinks that if he goes hunting site once, Jikyuk will have to lie down for three days, his body will hurt, and it's dangerous and difficult to do regularly because you will never know what may happen during hunting. The Gatu suddenly showed up, asking for his confirmation. He got confused because why would God ask him? He knew some people were chosen by God and awakened, but it was rare for him. Jichiak heard that the world was in great shock when the first being called God appeared. The idea that God exists must have been difficult to bear. What's even more surprising was the concept of selecting the awakened, giving them protection and even strengthening them. 
He tried to open the system and it worked and he was shocked that it was working. Gatu presents that he is selected as Gatu's social star because of God's interest. He must collect thumbs from others. Thumbs ups are converted into points which can be used to grow stronger. He can now purchase stats with likes and has finally awakened, but being a Gatu social star is still a puzzle. He is still thinking of what he can do when Chichik has already awakened. At first, he thinks gaining more health and strength is better if he fights a monster that might show up before him. Still, when he was watching the hunters fight, it looked like what was important was magic because he had seen so many hunters who lost even after using skills because they lacked magic. So he decided to increase the magic stats first. According to the system, 15 likes will be deducted and his knowledge about magic has increased. If used on the body, it can temporarily increase strength and durability. It is more effective for skills. After he upgrades it to an F plus rank, only two likes are left. He now tried to open the skills shop, which astonished him. There are Heavenly Demon 1 flash attacks. It is a legendary sword of the Heavenly Horse. It is said to be capable of even slashing a dimension and requires swordsmanship skill over S to rank, a serenade of the Archangel. A song of Helen played by Archangel Gabriel. Every person who hears this song can eliminate all illnesses and curses. According to the legend, if one can master it, even a dead person can revive it, and it's worth the nine constantly continuing that he can't even know if that can be bought. He feels tired because such things are just pipe dreams, so he tells the system to show him that it can be bought for two likes. The system has 432 skills available for one like and 358 skills available for two likes. The system has to breathe for him to become healthy by breathing well. He won't feel muscle pain after a long walk. He can eat well even if he eats fast. His stomach doesn't get upset. Popping, he can poop well in any situation. Massage helps with blood circulation and the recovery of his health. It can also be used on others. Something brilliant came to his mind. Having a massage skill is a great skill for him to get likes. If he massages them once, they will give him a thumbs up, and with this he will be able to earn more likes after using two thumbs up. He purchased massage skills the next day at the hunter assistant head office. He greets everyone. His comrades compliment him for being diligent. He talked with Mr. Kim and complimented him too, because he uses the dorm he comes daily to work from Gyeonggi province, which is amazing. His body cam successfully confirmed him as a 20,431 worker. He asked Mr. Kim if they can upload the video from their body cam, because he saw hunters uploading body cam records on their channel. But Mr. Kim also wonders if they can upload it because of the confidentiality. After having a nice talk with each other, Mr. Kim gave him a thumbs up. It's a 12.30 lunch break at the cafeteria. Hunters had a delicious side dish, however, if they ate too much, they would have trouble because of how they could eat after touching some terrifying corpses. Mr. Kim asks if he will ask the head office if it is okay to broadcast privately with the body cam. The rumors are too fast, but it doesn't matter who heard them, they should all go together and do it if such a request. For them, united we stand, divided we fall. They agree, it will be fun. Don't be afraid to speak up when you can. They will all go together, and getting scolded together is better. All the uncles came in with him to support him. He tells everyone he learned a little massage technique and asks if they want to show his skills. During the lunch break, he showed some of his comrades his massage skills. Skill massage is activated, at first he starts lightly, his hands are moving on their own and something like his skills become self-conscious after it is activated. Something felt strange on Mr. Kim's waist, so his hands went there alone which astonished him because it might hurt him, but it felt great and he didn't even notice. He received three thumbs up after massaging them, so he wondered if he used a calm massage. This passive skill did not consume any magical power. If Chichik puts magic power into his hands when massaging, it is because it is said that if he adds magic to a skill, the effects would be greater. The system was flaunted because he had greatly improved the sick patients, earning a skill bonus. Massage rank has risen and the skill's effect has increased. His healing power greatly increased, making it rise to rank D, after showing his massage skills. He received 34 points after working hours at the Hunter Assistant Team Headquarters. They asked for the body cam together, but the Resource Collection Department Team Leader welcomed them, asking if they came in there to only ask for something like that because there were other people on the management side too. But the Resource Collection Department Team Leader made them all leave except for Jichuk. The Department Leader supports him, however he has something to ask of him. For a while he was worried because he didn't have a suitable person. There was no need to share the profits, it was all for Jichuk. He plans to step out soon like his older sisters and brothers. He asks him to shoot him to explode the view count. He declined because for him, it's better to use an expert. He opposes the shabbier, the better. The harsher the environment, the better. 
The manager is willing to give him a down payment, but if they do so, traces of funds will remain, making it difficult at this stage. But as soon as Jichiuk moves to the next level, he will be greatly rewarded. The colleagues of Jichiuk say that their company has good ratings. They say they are the company that doesn't give useless speeches and only talks about work. Mr. Kim thought they would reject it quickly, but he guesses they are open-minded regarding the profession. They gave them permission for the video, and they won't charge any money. That could not have gotten any better. Chikyuk remembers that the resource collection department team leader gave him a different kind of body cam, a micro body cam that hunters use. It has great endurance and doesn't break during fights. If he uses it, he can film in any situation. The car suddenly began to shake when he was reading the automatic data transfer. The bus flipped, his whole body hurt, and blood came from him. He feels like his body is completely smashed. First, he uses his massage skills. After using his skills himself, he also helps people injured on the bus. He saw a serious wound he didn't imagine, so he calmed him down to treat him. The system shows that the wounds on the subject have begun healing. The abnormal conditions and fainting are gone. My proficiency in massage is increasing greatly. Chichik thinks something blew up. They suggested going outside first to ask for some help and figure out what was happening to them. But Chichik suppressed them because if the case was the appearance of a gate, there might be minsters outside. Instead of going out recklessly, it might be safer just to stay. Since he is awake, he suggests holding on for a little while. After finishing the first aid, he will try to go outside. The massage rank has increased and has obtained an additional effect. From then on, just using the massage skill will automatically get Chichik a thumbs up. He will just get likes by massaging. The passenger says having a healer type awakener as a co-passenger on the bus was a great time. It's just barely first aid, but he was so distracted from using the skill that he suddenly remembered if he was using a camera. He said it turns on automatically when a strong shock or a monster is sensed. He asked everyone if they felt uncomfortable, but they all felt great. He told everyone to stay there for a while, and he would just go look at the situation they were currently in. When he goes outside, he smells burned skin and blood. The smell of oil is mixed in, and the whole surrounding area stinks. The waves generated from the gate aren't like anything that happened before, and gate opened in the middle of Seoul. He remembered the passengers on the bus and decided to gather himself together because he had to recall what he had learned before becoming an assistant. He figured out that the goblins coming towards him were just scouts. The real main units will arrive if those goblins return to the gate. Since it is in the middle of Seoul, the government will soon send a skilled hunter. Until then, he will do everything he can and try his best. He suggested that everyone run away as far as possible and get into the nearest shelters or buildings near the government. When they all got out safely, the goblins suddenly came towards him. He reminds himself to calm down because he still has much time. What he did was open the system and buy some skills in the shop. The system suggested getting a popular aim for a fortune since his likes are strength. He opened the beginner's package only to use the two skills. The basic equipment set is generated, the item drop rate booster is applied, and the proficiency of the skills is increased. As a beginner's skill, he won't lose sanity during the battle, can always fight with stable calmness, and can resist the lowest ranked mental type magic. The more attacks the block blocks, the more defense and endurance will be increased. He now used the beginner's package and the beginner's effect. A sprout developed on his head after receiving the beginner's skill, boldly announcing that he was a beginner. Chichiuk weirdly asks himself what kind of shitty effect is happening to him after receiving the beginner's skill since he is not used to it, and is unsure if he is prepared for the battle. 127 likes were left on him for purchasing in the store. Strength is more important since he doesn't have AoE magic or skills. Chichik assigned all his remaining points which caused his D-rank strength to increase by one level. Immediately feels the strength coursing throughout his whole body, which will surely be enough to break the skull of a goblin. When he's out, already ready to fight goblins, he sees some people who are still not evacuated. His first battle started, there were three of them, and they gave him a surprise attack. In amusement, given that it is his first battle, why is he fighting so well? Is it because his strength level went up? Is it because of his beginner skills? If that's the case, blocking the opponent's attack earlier was not a coincidence because it felt so natural, as if his body was used to the skill. Everything went fine and he did grapple with one goblin calmly because of his firm mind. His mind is surprisingly peaceful. He wonders how hunters fight so well because a beginner's package is useful. He now attacks the last two goblins, which are quite swift. But that is all, at least when compared to scouts, which Jichuk weirdly sees. He is not weak, which shows in his strength. He kills them with his sword, which marks the end of the three goblins. His sword proficiency, shield proficiency, and firm mind got a plus point. It was good for his first battle. He received multiple likes. He didn't know where they came from but he understood the increase in skill level. 
The system shows that the citizens he saved are grateful for killing the goblins. People thank him for saving them, so he already knows that the likes are from their gratitude, even from the people who watched. The comments are coming from everywhere. At that point, he knows and understands how this system works. The levels won't increase no matter how many goblins he kills. He won't even get experience from killing monsters. Only the likes can make him stronger. But now, the people were filling the thumbs up points with their cheer, but he didn't know what he would get if someone died. He has seen too many situations where hope suddenly changes into fear before the goblins spread to different places. He tried to do a shop window and search for the aggro skill, which affects the biggest area and can be used immediately. He bought one another skill called Telekinesis Arrow. He uses Scream of the Wild to make the goblins flaunt and use his next skill, the Telekinesis Arrow. His head suddenly feels like it is going to blow up. The system shows that his mana has greatly decreased. There is only a little mana left. So he invested half of his money in magic, which helped him in relieving his headache. We see that government helicopters are on their way to rescue. Chikyuk thinks it's dark already, but the hunters still aren't on the scene yet. They take taxes to do their job in such a situation because it's hard for him to fight alone. After all, he has been fighting all the goblins all day. When he thought that the main units had already arrived because of the new big figures he saw coming towards him, he didn't expect that it was a monster that he hadn't seen yet. They all look strong, are called Orchi, and are everywhere. He cannot get more likes as all the citizens have already evacuated and the hunters have finally arrived to save him. The man and wife whom he saves thank him and are about to give him money because of his gratitude that he saved his pregnant wife, but Chichuk declines. The man is so persistent in showing his gratitude to him because Chichuk saved his pregnant wife that, although it is not much, he wants Chichuk to accept it. For Jikshuk, it will be embarrassing because he just did what he must do and advised them not to worry about him and to make sure to get tested. But the system shows that the two citizens are highly impressed by his integrity, so he got 100 points. A man told Jikshuk that he had been receiving thanks since earlier and admired him for his responsive attitude, and then another 30 points were added to him. The man he saved honestly told him he was afraid that the hunters would come too late, and everyone would be dead because it happens sometimes, but this time the number of casualties is high. Even though it has not been long since Chichiok has awakened, it turns out that he has abilities befitting an all-rounder. A public official told Chichiok that people with multiple jobs are rare, like him. The organizer followed him up by saying that they would organize the resources collected from the monsters that Chichiok had hunted and send them to Chichiok. He has now let Chichiok go back to rest and will get back to him soon. The system shows that the public official is grateful to him and has given him 100 points. After meeting with public officials, Jikyuk feels like he has become a real hunter. At Jikyuk's home, he lies down in bed and still feels like a dream for everything that happened to him, and he still vividly remembers fighting the goblins. The system shows him and gives him a simple quest to upload a record on YouTube to get more points, and then he will receive a complete beginner skill acquisition. Jikyuk looks at the skills and they all look very useful. The fern mine is sword and worthwhile shield skills. The system told Jikyuk to put his data on YouTube, but since he does not know much about editing, he simply uploaded it. Jichuk dreamed of his grandfather running him into an emergency room, crying, wishing his fever would go down, and telling him not to worry because they were almost at the hospital. Jichuk keeps on crying and doesn't want to get intubated by the nurse, so her grandpa lures him by saying that if he gets shot, his fever will go down, and he will buy him an ice cream. His grandfather bought him an ice cream afterward and left him a temporary safekeeping that he had nothing else wanted but for him to grow up nice and healthy. He woke up to a beep on his phone call from Mr. Kim, asking what had happened to him and being furious, saying that he had already finished his work and gone home. Mr. Kim told him that he was awake and already on the news. Jikshek did not absorb what he had heard and doubted it, so Mr. Kim repeatedly told him that he was on the news. Jikshek quickly ended the phone call, doubting and astonished. On the news, he saw himself fighting over the goblins on TV, but the resolution is low. The reporter's news tells the audience that the citizens have witnessed a hunter saving numerous lives, and it seems like the hunter has awakened recently. He also said that he might have three skills, healing, physical strength, and magic. More than that, some citizens thanked Jikjik because they could survive because of him and some said that he left without saying a word and with no trace. The authorities have already made the hunter's information private under the Personal Privacy Act because his video was uploaded to a social media platform. The video is experiencing a massive flood of views and is still increasing. It says in the video that in the middle of the city where the gates open, a person who also appears to be an awakener was caught saving people's lives. Chikia figured out that the video was captured from his body cam and uploaded before bed. When he tried to open his system, he got 80,000 likes and is still counting, and the number of subscribers and views is increasing. 
The video he uploaded yesterday before he went to bed currently has 3.5 million views and 200,000 subscribers in just one night. Chichia can't believe that all of that is happening to him because there are a lot of videos about saving people all around the internet, which makes it unbelievable that he will get the attraction. Jikyuk computed that compared to the number of views, the likes are much less. The system messages him that the total number of likes is as follows and the number of views is not connected to the number of likes received on YouTube. Jikyuk comprehends the message and appreciates that even though it is his first time it already has around 80,000 views. He just slept and woke up. He can't believe he is already awake or still dreaming because suddenly he became a social media star on YouTube after waking up. Someone knocks on his door, which is unusual because no one comes to Jikyuk's place often. He opened his door and was astonished at what he saw. After Huben found the barrier stone that could stop the gates from opening, it were installed in different locations in densely populated cities. Since then, no gate opening has happened in the middle of a city. The interviewer on TV asks his interviewee if the experts are not surprised by the situation at the barrier stone and about the goblins. His interviewee answered that they are currently researching more, but so far they have not been able to make any concrete discoveries. On the other hand, the funds meant for purchasing the Barrier Stone have been decreasing yearly, and they have decreased by up to 50%. If this kind of policy does not change, there is no guarantee that such a situation will not arise elsewhere. If this kind of policy does not change, there is no guarantee that such a situation will not arise elsewhere. He agreed that it is really important to obtain the Barrier Stone more than anything else, but is highly demanded in so many countries and its price is too expensive. He does not agree that it will be easy, because normally, there is a chance to obtain it when a three-star dungeon, meaning the dungeon that can only be cleared by Awakener, with a higher than 100 level or higher level of the dungeon is cleared. The organization agreed that there is a possibility. The higher the level of the dungeon, the higher the chance. But the problem is that only 30 guilds can clear three-star dungeons, and the teams that can clear four-star dungeons are less than five, so it is impossible to clear a five-star dungeon in their country. As such, securing barrier stones is a matter that directly affects their survival, and they dearly need help from the government's efforts. The interviewer agreed because it was quite serious, and they wanted to see the citizens' reactions. Chikchik opened his door, and in astonishment, he saw the team leader and asked how he knew his house. He shyly asked for a minute since he was in a bachelor's house. It was quite messy and got embarrassed. The team leader did not mind because it was rude for him to come into Chikchik's house so suddenly. Team leader gives a little present to Chikchik. The team leader noticed his house and told him that he knew that Chichuk was a neat person. Inside the team leader, he is kind of judging Chichuk's place. On the other hand, System tells that Jihan Jian is astonished by his character and Chichuk obtains one like. Chichuk offered him a seat and said he would just get something to drink. In Chichuk's perspective, in their current state, people are still labeled as citizens one and two, but knowing that he is an awakener makes him feel more nervous. In the broadcast, Chichuk discovers that the team leader is also awakened. In the broadcast, the team leader said it was a challenging dungeon, and he never thought he would be able to experience that in his life. If the monsters of the main units had come out, it wouldn't have ended so terribly. The reporter complimented the subordinate because they could buy a lot of time. The team leader tells the reporter that the word subordinate is kind of uncomfortable to him. The team leader says he has been awakened, but they have kept it a secret outside the company. The team leader didn't know that Jichik was awakened too and was inspired by the dedication displayed in the last scene. Chichiuk humbly opposed him and could barely survive because the hunters arrived. The team leader bluntly said he came into Chichiuk's place so suddenly because he would like to make him an offer. The team leader honestly said that Chichiuk is a hunter assistant and even a non-regular worker, but since he is an awakener, he should be working as a hunter. So please make an offer to sign a contract with him. It's astonished and flattered because the third generation of the Jama company wants him, and a big company is offering to scout him. Most of the time, the talented rookies of the year get eaten, so he didn't imagine this would happen to him. Chikyuk is still blank and feels his heartbeat as if it will explode. He spoke honestly to the team leader, saying that he did not know what to say since it was sudden. The team leader agreed that it was so sudden after all, so he should take his time thinking about it. Chikyuk feels intimidated, even though they are the ones offering him and tells himself to be confident. Chikyuk thanked him for the offer, but he would like to check the terms and conditions first. Jihen Zhang, the team leader, agreed to discuss the details first. Chikyuk figured out that Jihen Zhang was using a high-ranking skill to check the sincerity of his words. Chikyuk noticed that he was planning to read his mind and was fond of Chikyuk. But he was not letting any of his guards down and he used his resistance with beginner skill and a firm mind since he had his skill too. But Chikyuk is still confused about how he will know what skill the opponent is using on him, or is it because of his unique system that can see people's moods and statuses in life? 
While Jishar tried to use his skill, his resistance failed and his rank was insufficient. So he guesses he shouldn't lie and should be honest with the team leader. Jihen Zhang, the team leader, told Jikshik that he understood that he was worried and liked to take him in, so he was planning to give him as much as his company could offer. Jikshik decided only to tell the truth and try to obtain what he wanted. Jihen Zhang also added that Jikshik must already be aware that hybrid type awakeners are highly priced, and he plans to give Jikshik what he deserves. He asks Jikshik what conditions he has in mind. Jikhyuk said he'd like to get as much as possible with his ability, but he doesn't know how far he can get stronger. Awaken, Jihen Zhang uses his skill again, a skill judging the sincerity of his words and confirms that there is no lie and that it is the truth. According to Jihen Zhang, there is a position for close fighting, long-range combat, and even healing. On top of that, there is something more that he does not know. So what? How did he know? In this chapter, Jihen Zhang will give him 2 million as a down payment, Jikhyuk can't believe what he has heard about the price of the down payment as a nudie. The contract will be for five years if he joins the battle assigned by the company twice a month, and the ratio of items earned will be 9 to 1. He will also get the nine parts of the contract that Jikhyuk instantly gets fascinated by because it is like an absurd condition and feels like a dream. In addition, the company will support his younger siblings' law school because they heard that his younger siblings gave up going to university because of the tuition fee. After knowing his sibling's school condition, Jichik was astonished at what he had heard. Jen Zhang's company is like an investigation agency. In addition to the down payment in his sibling's law school, they will also get him a manager for assistance, which means the company has high expectations from Jichik. Jichik thinks that his situation does not have a sense of reality because can someone's life change that much in just one day just by appearing in a broadcast? Jen Zhang understands him. So he already calls it a day since Jichik must have many thoughts running through his mind after knowing his offer, so he gives Jikyuk time to think about it. Jikyuk feels sorry for Jian Zhang because he came to his place personally, but he can't give him the right answer right away. Jian Zhang is good about it since Jikyuk should be careful when deciding about that kind of matter, as it is an important matter. Jian Zhang told him they had started preparing for his contract, which surprised Jikyuk. According to Jian Zhang, he just wanted to give him a heads up before they do it formally, because this is not the time to use tricks. Jikyuk thinks that things are getting too big, and if it is alright, it is his worth, so it won't be too late to hear about other conditions. Jikyuk then told him that he would be there if he planned to schedule it for him. Jian Zhang assured him that as soon as they were ready, they would contact Jikyuk again. A few days later, they chose the auditorium within the dorm as their meeting place. Jikyuk Yun was the hot topic of discussion in the company. He is a hybrid type that can do close combat, ranged attacks, and even healing. Without even training, Jikyuk had a strong mentality and fought scout goblins as soon as he awakened because he was the perfect rookie, with no flaws in his story that drew people's attention. He was so worried because he was young. About 30 minutes are left and Dae and company manager Hyunjin Choi feels anxious and stressed reading the manager director's feedback about Jikyuk. The association feedback is for director Jiang Jian. Jiang the company must act calmly because they are confident. For managing director Hansel Kim, there's something called manners. It will affect both companies badly, it's like telling her to die if she can't take Jikyuk. If the Daeyeon company manager Hyunjin gets scared, she is the one who will lose. She guesses that Jihen Jian is planning to make it like an auction to pressure them, but does Jian and Jong think that Hyunjin Choi will give a shit? It's been 10 years since she has been doing her job, so Jian Jong does not scare her. With 10 minutes left, they announced that they would organize things since the event was about to begin. One of the reporters rants that the director told him that he got good feeling and told the reporter to take him no matter what, but what should he do? The condition offered by the managing director raises doubts that it will be enough. Hyunjin Choi saw the profile information of Jichiuk, and to summarize it, Jichiuk has no parents or relatives, only his younger sibling in law school. Jichiuk got high grades and lots of certificates. His appearance is good like that of his older brother and Jichiuk Eon was working as a hunter's assistant to support his younger brother in his studies. That being said, they must cherish each other. Since Chichik's brother's law school is the K school with good relations with their company, Hyunjin Choi decided to go with that one. The last time limit of 30 minutes is over. Jahan Jian announced that he would assume everyone had made decisions about the offer. Jahan Jian said that they would start with the Daehin company. The team leader started with the Daehin group in order. Hyunjin Choi, the manager of the external sales department of Daehin group, spoke first on behalf of their company. To attract Jikyuk, she suggests that their Daegian group propose a down payment of 4 billion won. The contract period will be 5 years and the ratio of items earned will be 85-15. 
They will also help their younger brother study law at Key University and provide a housing allowance. It's twice as much as the chief of staff and the sharing ratio is 5% less. As all people know, Daehyun Group is the best construction company in Korea, and they are willing to provide a house in a posh area of the city that has been reconstructed. Daehyun Construction is a leader in high-end apartments in Korea. Jumba Group dominates the world in the field and Daehyun Group is leading the world in architecture and construction, where they are starting the construction of Gangnam's new town. Following the Daehyun Group, unconventional conditions from other companies followed. Jikhyuk didn't know what he would choose because he didn't even know the odds of his abilities. Still, despite going through such a phase, Jikhyuk had no choice but to remain calm about his abilities. He maintained his calm probably because there were too many corpses of hunters that he had collected himself. Then finally, the Jungle Group's return. Jikhyuk couldn't help but listen to them talk about the conditions they offered. Jihen Zhang offers him $8 billion in down payments. In addition, it will also give you a B-grade awakening stone, a gemstone, a very rare item that can awaken ordinary people. They give Jikyuk time to think and talk to his brothers while the participating company is requested to summarize the contract terms. In a room with his brother, Jin Jong gave them the Awakener contract document, which is incredibly thick. Jikyuk honestly told Jihan Jong that he still does not like it completely because if it is like that, he thinks that he will manage to protect his brother. Jihan Jong understands him and thinks it will be okay because he has already given Jikyuk a lot of room. Jichuk signed an Awakener contract that will get him 8 billion won as a down payment and a B-rank Awakening Stone. Jichuk still hasn't decided where to sign a contract after undergoing the Awakening. As if all the bad clauses have been deleted. If Jichuk is lucky enough, he can get an A-rank that is much better than a B-rank. Before Jihen Zhang left him, he wished Jichuk all the best in the future. Then after signing the contract, he left him a gift and he wanted Jichuk to open it once he got back. As Jichuk and his brother were about to leave, they saw Hunjin Choi, the manager of the external sales department at Daehyun. The brothers thought that she waited because of the contract when Jichuk had already signed it with Jumma Group. She waited for them not to sign the contract, she didn't want them to misunderstand, but she did not know how to say it directly. Jumma Group is one of the places she would like not to go to. Jichuk confusingly asks why she has that thought and where it came from. For Hunjin Choi, it's currently a noisy place and she's worried that Jichuk might have a hard time. Because of the infighting and not only that, Jung Ji Han is also a person who used to be called the Jungle Group's maniac because he was the chairman's abandoned grandson. In Jikshuk's thoughts, he also had a suspicious feeling about what she had said. Jikshuk probably heard of other children and grandchildren while working at the company, but he probably didn't know as much about Jung Ji Han. Jikshuk agreed that it was the first time that she had heard of it, perhaps because Jung Ji Han was such a person who suddenly joined the company after laying low for such a long period. It won't be easy for Chikchuk if he still has a bad temper. That would be a problem. Otherwise, it means he is up to it. Chikchuk was astonished by what he had heard from Hunjin Choi because Jichuk and Jihan Zhang should have told him before the contract began. Now he's getting scared. After the long revelation about Jihan Zhang, Hunjin Choi apologized to him for taking his time and wished him a good day, and she advised Jichuk to think of it as a senior hunter's concern. Chikchuk opposes her, thinking that she is just worried about him. After that, she gave me her card. In any case, if the contract is breached, Dash and Group will serve him in better conditions. Chikchuk's brother asked about what they were talking about with Hunjin Choi. Chikchuk said she came to give him her business card in case he breaches the contract and wishes to make a new one as commonly thought. His brother expects that Hunjin Choi is trying to recruit Chikchuk, even though he has already signed a contract and is not giving up. Jichik unconsciously walks while looking at the building wondering if Joan has a backstory like what Hunjin Choi told him, but right now, he looks very handsome. He's more like a picky third-generation business tycoon. Is of a naughty joke, as manager Choi said. Jichik's brother shouts at him because he has been waiting for Jichik to answer him while Jichik is walking while looking at the building. Jung Jihan's father is the fourth son of Chairman Jongmin. The first, second, and third children are all very talented. On the other hand, it's almost like Jihan's father, Jung and Ju, is non-existent. While he was reading some article, it suddenly got deleted, perhaps because the Jungma group behind it must have threatened their reputation. When he was tired of thinking of any reason, he opened the gift from Jihan Zhang, which looked like an ordinary watch. Jikchik opens his god too, he thinks that he must accumulate quite a few points and check if there are any appraisal skills. For him, money is very important if you want to continue life as a hunter. Even if you get something from the dungeon, you will get scammed if you don't know the item's value. Appraisal skills are essential to knowing what is worth something and what is not. The design changed quite a bit when he opened the store, it looked like it got bigger. 
He searched for the appraisal skill and the casting time should be about 10 seconds, and you should be able to learn those skills with his current abilities. He discovered that finding a skill isn't as easy as one would think. He saw the wise man's eyes, which cost 100,000 points, but he currently only has 108,000 points. He squares to himself that he needs to get his skill set evenly balanced out, but the prices are not affordable. He selected only growth type skills among the appraisal skills. He was selected for the eye of observation with the grade of growth type. The skills say that they understand the essence of things. As proficiency increases, the skill level will increase and evolve into a higher skill, costing 1580. He has successfully purchased the eye of observation but is still clueless about using it. When he figured it out, he determined that he just needed to think about what he wanted to appraise, and he would get the insight. Now that he had learned the appraisal skill, he tested it on Jung Jihan's watch. Gatu flaunted that it was just a plain and durable wristwatch made by a craftsman from another dimension. It is waterproof and displays the time. It is safe even if it goes into the deep sea. And it is perfect in any situation. He can see nothing like attack and defense when he uses appraisal skills except for accurately displaying the time. But artifacts are artifacts, so he just wears them. Still, it is a good gift, as it is an item from another dimension. He yawned and opened the status window to see if his hypothesis was correct. His insight mastery got a plus three, and the beginner's bonus got a plus one. It had a little effect when he used it for the first time, but his skill evolved the more he used it. Even if the experience and item price adjustments are attached, the level will not rise. Skill experience is being applied as it is, as long as it is fixed at level 1, he can upgrade it with the beginner's package. The point-of-sale shop where legs are collected is very different from ordinary shops. Products marked exclusive are not sold under normal conditions. He realizes he doesn't get stronger just by hunting monsters because he needs people's attention to get liked. He purchased the skill that the top hunters on Gatu would have at the shop, which is Mana Heart of Arkadragon. He uses the heart of magical race called a dragon to gather mana. Arcane Circle of Magic Recovery If you draw the magic circle and stay above it, the mana recovery rate increases by 200%. Sylph's Blessing A group of spirits will bless him. While the blessing continues, a green light will follow him, increasing attack power and agility. After learning the skill, Jichiv accumulated proficiency by using it repeatedly. At Jichiv's house, he received 8 billion in his account and got a call from the team leader asking him if he had confirmed the deposit he had given. He got a knock on his door, as expected from his brother, asking if he had already received the down payment. His younger brother was amazed because it looked like money in the games. Since they both live in rented houses, they decide to start looking for a place to live together, and due to the nature of his job, he thinks that he should find a sturdy house. Jigship got a call that his written hunter examination was over. Since he is a former hunter assistant, he is exempt from the written examination and can directly participate in the practical exams. Hunter Exam the exam that must be passed to be registered in the agency as an awakener. It has two parts, written and practical, which should be passed to be registered. When registered by the agency, missions can be completed formally under the management of the government. There are many benefits given to formal hunters, but danger and responsibility follow as well. Fortunately, the people who were hunter assistants before were exempted from the written exam because the test for the assistant license is much harder than the hunter written exam. Chikyuk is worried about how she's going to study again. It isn't easy for ordinary people to work with the hunters, and when it comes to taking care of monster ecology, corpses, and poison, they are strict. It is simple to take a practical exam. He just has to move to the assigned gate and hunt in front of the inspector. Unless he gets disqualified because some safety problem is caused, it won't be that hard because they only check the ability to fight and survive. It is easy to say, but will it be as easy as it sounds? Two days later, in front of the dorm, Joan Jiheim came and fetched Jikya personally. Zhang Jihan told him that the cooperation agreement between the Zhang the company and trade team was over. If Jishik tells them his ability, it will get him the equipment that is right for him. The more details he writes, the more accurate his equipment is. But if he likes to keep his ability a secret, he does not have to tell him in detail. They will eventually find out his battles repeat, so he won't recommend lying about it. Even if he hides one card, it is better to show his ability. The car stops in such a quiet place in Seoul. It is a region with safe house complexes where the hunters of the Jungla company stay. It is a complex they recently made for the hunters who contracted with their company. Jung Jihan also told him that the Dahian company is getting many talented hunters from the Jungla company. They have made and will manage the complexes to stop the outflow of talented hunters. The house's entrance amazes Jikchuk, so Jung Jihan offers to contact him immediately if he likes the house. It is not a new house with no owner because the hunter who used to live there passed away in the dungeon, and it was an unfortunate accident. 
Ji Kyuk saw a picture of the former owner and the older man. Jum Ji Han explains that he was the owner of the house before and he was the right arm of his uncle. They were in a succession fight but unfortunately, he died. He was such a talented hunter. Only a few hunters use the big mansion as a shelter in the country. It is a top-class shelter that protects the lives of hunters. Jung Ji Han is willing to adjust the price a little for him, and since it is tax-free to buy something from hunters, it is a profit for him. Jung Ji Han gave him the contract, and after looking around the house, he could go to the training center. He explains to Ji Chuk to keep the ability secret, as they made the training center invisible from the outside. Ji Kyuk noticed the facility was great, but the sportswear hunters wore had different colors and marks. The facilities are huge, it is the place that has the best conditions for the training of hunters and trainers. It is indeed like the facility of a big company. He gets astonished when he sees his brother because his brother didn't tell him anything about that and should have at least told him that he would come. His brother's body used to have a good shape, but after the training his body looked so hard that he could be called a hunter. The trainer calls Mukchik because he can't go out during his training, so he quickly returns to his training and makes Jichik watch him. Jung Ji Han told Jikshuk that Mukchik would be sparring with a hunter someday. Even if his brother is not an awakener, they will not use any abilities. They purely use their physical combat skills, so he does not have to worry about it. But still for Jichuk, it is a bad idea for an ordinary person to fight a hunter. Concerned, he asked again if they would soar without using awakened abilities. Jung Ji Han assured him to trust the hunters, and Mishuk gladly accepted it. While watching the sparring, he saw the opponent, a foreigner, a mercenary who had recently joined the company. Muchik had good physical traits, so finding the right opponent was hard, but still, it looks dangerous. It is a scary punch that he can feel the strong force with towards him. Even though the opponent won't use his ability, he is still a professional hunter. Muchik seems to not even get scared when fighting against a mercenary and the opponent also looks surprised. Muchik's capability is unexpected because he just looks like a kid who is studious, and he is just an ordinary man who just started to train. Muchik is not losing an experienced hunter, and he has not been attacked properly by a hunter yet. The attack of Muchik hit the foreigner's jaw well while the opponent couldn't even land one attack on him, which caused him to get frustrated over an ordinary man since he is an awakener. It will be the end of the foreigner's position in the Jama company if he loses to such a newbie, so out of frustration he uses his skills and ability as an awakener to make Muchik pass out, which astonished everyone, especially his brother, who was seriously mad and lost the sparing. Chichiuk walks towards his brother who's coughing up blood and tries to wake him up. Chichiuk shouted to call the medics first, because he was coughing up blood and talked to his trainer that his opponent was not supposed to use his ability and must have used his ability because he was losing, but they just reasoned out that the sparring was so intense that he mistakenly used a skill that Chichiuk couldn't believe because how does someone who made a mistake make such a face teasingly? Chichiuk made his brother stay still and perform a massage skill. First, he applied first aid to an injured subject earning a proficiency experience point bonus. But his injury is serious, and the massage skill that he performs is not enough to warn an expert. According to the agency, since the foreigner has no experience sparring with ordinary people, it must have been hard to control his ability, and they will just warn him about the defect. The rescuer came and made the people around Muchik step aside because they would transfer the patient. Before they transferred Muchik, Jikyuk made a promise that he would make his opponent kneel in front of him and assure him that he would be okay. Jum Jihan talked to Jichiuk and apologized, saying that it was their fault that they could not manage well. The demand that he will only take compensation makes Jichiuk mad, and he demands that he spar with Muchuk's opponent because he wants to personally score an apology and fight properly as an awakener. Shelton, who is Muchuk's opponent, agrees that he will spar with Jichiuk and won't just apologize unless he loses. He will kneel and apologize to Muchuk just like Jichiuk wants. But since Chichioki is a rookie who just became awake, they have decided to give him a handicap. According to Shelton, he will let him attack first until he has three combos. Combos refer to weapons meeting weapons with each other. If weapons don't meet each other, then it is not a combo. But if Chichioki lets his guard down because of a handicap, since Shelton is a defensive type awakener who can make his body hard like metal, he will let Chichioki attack first until the three combos, but he won't block it. While Chichioki has a wooden sword, he still only has gloves so he is a close-range fighter. The rule is that if one of them surrenders or ends up in a state where you can't already fight, you will lose. If one of them goes outside of the ring, that is also considered a loss. As both sides agreed to give a handicap of three combos, Jikyuk will be attacking first. Shelton had an observation since he didn't have any information about Jikyuk and since he was a newbie. Shelton immediately uses his skill, the Iron Body, but Jikyuk already knows that he will use it, so he uses the Blessings of Sulf. 
the spirits blessed him and his agility and strength increased. Shelton is so sure of himself that Jichit won't be able to even make a scratch on his body, so he lets him attack him until three combos. Instead of attacking Shelton, he activates a wind cloud walk that will have the energy of wind and clouds on it and tries to attack him. Chichuk secured and defended himself against the attacks of Shelton using his wooden sword, which dodged every punch and move. People around them are astonished and can't believe the skills that he has as a beginner. Shelton thinks that Jichuk does not give him an advantage for using close combat. So when Jichuk comes to the conclusion that he won't be able to block all Shelton's punches, he decides to finish him off by confirming the weak spots in his iron body that will give him a good result with flying arrows. When Shelton is already unable to fight, the people around them who are watching halt them because Jichuk might kill his opponent, but they are having a hard time calming him down, so the team leader restrains him and calms him down. While Jichuk is getting treated, he hears that they can't believe that he is just an ordinary rookie and an unstoppable opponent. Even if he does not have an authentic skill, and even if he did have outstanding skills, the way he moved and blocked was incredible, and he has a great deal of experience in knowing when to use which skill. The fellow awakened can't believe that he used to buff, debuff, distance, glory, and fast movement at all once. They think that if he is under the protection of God, he must have used only a single set of skills because he was using both spirit skills and shadow skills at the same time. Zhang Jihan's sister came, named Bika Zhang, the child that was born out of wedlock from the second son of the Jana company and the only mechanic master in Seoul. She has reached the apex of mechanical magic and made a new drone equipped with stealth skills. To the surprise of Zhang Jihan, her sister came and unexpectedly watched the battle between Jichuk and Shelton. Jihan's sister wants Jichuk and Muchuk, but they have to remember the rules that their grandfather made, they cannot steal peoples from their family members. Zhang Jihan's sister uses her spy drone to see someone's information and skills and was amazed by Jichuk's abilities and skills, because he also has a Class B Awakening Stone that, if supported by her ability, will reach a maximum level, which could help Jichuk a lot. The three of them, Jichuk, Zhang Jihan, and Big Zhang, went to the emergency medical center to see Muchuk's condition since Big Zhang has the ability to add life to machines and to living things because she is a genius who opened a new generation of magic engineering by making systems that allow even people who are not awakened to use their own abilities. There is a theory that the Awakening Stone reacts more to the more desperate person, and human happiness is a great element to awaken potential power, and since Jichuk has a Class B Awakening Stone, Big Zhang had a plan to awaken Muchuk even if his body is not yet ready for that. Bigajong lied to Jichuk that it was a physique body and completely prepared to be awakened and got fortune so Jichuk gave up and thanked her, and asked her what he could do for her as a gesture of gratitude for helping him and his brother. Bigajong gave Jichuk two things as expiation, and that is to tell Zhang Jihan to keep his promise personally, have a mukbang cooking channel on YouTube with his younger brother and willingly invest money. She will also give the best conditions of contract just to merely eat in front of the camera because many people will watch even if the two of them only eat chocolate pie. Muchik agreed to be Bigajong's human experiment and wanted to be as strong as possible, even though it might be dangerous in a procedure that is not approved by the country and will not have insurance. Muchik had a dream of himself and his brother as younger versions. He was clinging to Jikjik, asking for a ham, so Jikjik gladly made it and cut it into pieces, hurrying because Muchik was already hungry, which they shared. Suddenly, the ham turned weird and Jichuk suddenly disappeared. Muchik constantly asks for his brother because there is this thing solidifying the place and turning into some creature that he can't explain because of the motion. He just keeps on running, doesn't know what to do and calls for his brother. An old man wearing a Macintosh flaunted it, doubting that a child like Muchik could enter Akashic Records. Since Muchik has reached the land of rightness, he has the right to receive a gift. Muchik desperately asked for anything that would help him find his brother. But since Muchik was born from ink, it won't be easy to help him out with a singularity, according to the old man. The old man uses the power that came from his hand to make Muchik disappear and bid farewell. Muchik woke up from his dream, feeling great success. Bigajong gladly felt that Muchik came back from her first test and the first experiment worked well. She asks if he met the old man, so Muchik comes to the conclusion that what happened to him is not a dream. Bigajong scanned him, and unexpectedly, he got in a grade. In the training chamber, Jung Jihan clarifies to Muchuk that he can draw scripts from the records in the Abbey's library and use those scripts to attack his enemies or help his allies. Since Muchuk hasn't tried any of his skills yet and doesn't even know if they're good or bad, Jung Jihan suggests that he show them to him. Muchuk tried his best, even though he was a little bit nervous. He looks so innocent talking to the team leader and Chikiuk realizes that his little brother is hiding something. He needs to write what is on his mind like a writer and artist, 
that he practices and draws what comes to his mind. He then starts recording Iron Body, which he last saw from Shelton's skill. Jintrick's body gets hard like steel, feeling the Iron Body that his brother recorded in his mind. That is unbelievably amazing. Since Muchuk is just starting, he can't recognize all of the scripts except Iron Body, Haste, Dense, and Light. For John Jihan, Muchuk has great skills, but that is still not enough for him to earn an aid Jinchuk noticed his brother's face that seemed like he was pretending to be innocent, like something else was going on that they did not know about or perhaps Joan Jiha did not need to say everything explicitly. At the end, he did not argue with the leader. After all, he is an A-grade awakener. Muchik asks for the contract to be signed, which surprises them because the siblings have not heard of what is in the contract yet. Muchik wants to sign already, and after all that happened to him in the sparring, the first experiment, negotiating, and nagging, Jum Jihan thought that he would cancel the contract in their company, claiming it as unfair training and wouldn't just sign the contract in a snap. On Muchik's side, he thinks that it is a fair distribution of rights and interests between the two parties, so it is not unfair. Second, if he can go to a dungeon with his brother, Jinchuk, then it will certainly be advantageous for them to be on the same team. Muchuk does not want to allow his brother to go to dangerous places alone, they ride together and they die together. However, it does not want it to be a big deal. The only matter for him now is that he is already an official awakener and got an A in an instant. Jinchuk was amazed by his brother's adept reason for wanting to sign the contract without even knowing what was behind it. It would be useless if he kept arguing about the contract. Jung Jihan, the team leader, prepares the contract and asks for Muchuk's condition because he is going to take a hunter examination since it begins with a written examination. Muchuk answered him confidently, saying that he had never scored low marks in any examination. Also, Jinchuk assured him not to worry because he was always the child who made a name for himself in the national rankings. Jung Jihan agreed with his statement since he is a law student from the best university in Korea, so he doesn't need to worry about it. Jinchuk looks happier now since he tyrannized Shelton, has shown outstanding performance with his skills, and did not get any injuries, which surprised Muchuk with his brother's skills and abilities. After all that happened, Muchuk still does not understand what receiving the letter chaos means and asks his brother the number of gods he had received contacts from. Jinchuk gets confused about what he has heard about his brother and asks what the letter chaos has to do with Muchuk. He thinks that it is the reason why the gods who have been related to his ability have been contacting him. Muchik asks his brother if it is not happening to him about the gods who show interest in him. He told his brother that there were few at first, but then there was only a note that said they were checking the system, so Jinchuk should wait for a new patch. He also advised his brother that it was not his first time experiencing it, because the ability system itself was weird even from the beginning. Jinchuk suggests going and eating, but Muchik feels like the system is trying to block him from the beginning from being in contact with other gods. Jinchuk got confused about what he meant by blocking. Instead of answering, Muchuk withdraws his words because that must not be possible. But since Jinchuk said there was something to check in the system, he was just trying to be a guest and did not want his brother to get bothered by his thoughts, but Jinchuk doubted him. Even though there is no real direct name popping up on Muchuk's system, there is a high possibility that the Four Eyes record The Truth's Guy is Chan Ji, because the gods who chose him were all related to the message. Jinchuk, out of curiosity, asks who Chan Ji is. Muchuk does not know all the exact details, but it is said that Chang Ji invented the Chinese writing system. According to the rumors, he was not only an emperor but also called God. Whoever he is, no one knows what his real identity is, but one thing is certain. Chang Ji is a powerful god. Perhaps Muchuk will get a skill that is related to Chinese characters. This means there is indeed great potential for an A-class awakening. When it comes to obtaining papyrus, the god of books and libraries, the easiest god for Muchyuk that he thinks is Thoth, the Egypt he is in charge of knowledge. But since he knows the secrets of the world, he is also called the god of magic. And one of the symbols is obtaining. Jinchuk amusingly asks if he can even obtain some ancient magic skills from the god of magic in Egypt. Muchyuk can probably adopt it since he is the god who found the hieroglyphs of Egypt, he must have powerful ancient magic. Jinchuk can't believe what he has heard about the letter of chaos that Muchuk got that made all the Asian gods contact his brother. The last one is close to Huang Hui, which is somewhat familiar to them because they can't think of anything other than one specific person when they talk about Handel. Muchuk also heard that a hero who is not god can also choose a hunter. Overall, there are Egyptian hieroglyphs, ancient Chinese Hanja, and even Hangul too. After hearing of his brother's concern about his gods, Jinchuk can't even guess what abilities his brother has. 
Jinchuk heard that an ordinary man cannot challenge the power of God in one human among the legends of the scriptures. But still Jinchuk and Muxiuk have to make a choice. Muxiuk only thinks that he can pick King Sejong, the one who invented the Korean writing system Hangul. Since the character they are currently using is King Sejong's creation, he can get a bonus on whatever he is going to do. Jinchuk agreed because if it belonged to their culture, it was normal to get stronger ability stats. Even without a reason, Muxiuk feels like he has to follow King Sejong. After a few weeks, the day of the practical hunter examination happens somewhere in Seoul. There are a lot of reporters who are more hard-headed than the examiners trying to get in because they are not allowed to jump on the line and need to follow the rules. Muchik predicts that not only the reporters, but the whole country must be curious about his brother Jinchuk, since he is a rookie awakener that easily beats an experienced hunter because he had a viral video sparring with Shelton without getting a scratch on his body. The video can't hide the fact that many people admire and like Jinchuk because he is still getting several likes which are increasing endlessly. To both surprise and delight, the CEO came to the said venue for the hunter's examination. The CEO gladly told Jinchuk the great news because he was surprised that his video was ranking number one in recommended videos. He admires Jinchuk because with every move he makes, the citizens of their country go crazy. Jinchuk did not expect the news that his video went viral and is now in rank one. And since he is now known, Jinchuk guessed he could not live peacefully anymore. Jin Zhang has had a plan since Jinchuk went viral. They are now able to kick Shelton out with a good reason because the company also has a big problem with him. He was not a great hunter but caused a lot of problems. Even his uncle agreed and said that it was also a good thing to do. Jin Zhang claims it is an advantage for what happened with Jinchuk and Shelton because people are now focusing on Jinchuk. When Jin Zhang looked around a little, he could see lots of Mr. Jinchuk's fans. The name of the fan club was Index Finger, which is funny. The CEO also took a photo with the fan club too. Now that Jinchuk is getting more pleasure than they imagined, Jin Zhang has high expectations of him. The coordinator of the examination announced that the candidates may proceed to the examination room already and follow their protocol and steps to verify their identity at the entrance. Jin Shiok was about to leave after hearing that they needed to proceed to the examination and Mushik, but good luck to his brother. Jin Zhang interrupted his leave and made his stop because he got someone from Zhang Jin, a branch company of the Zhang family. Also, it is CEO Jihan Zhang's company that might help him. Jin Shiok got confused because of what help he might need. Jian Zhang presents a girl who is a staff member and might help him in the hunter's exam. Jin Chuk suddenly reminisces about the time when he was the hunter's assistant and all he did was just clean up the dead bodies of monsters. But now a great opportunity has happened and he is now taking a test and he is determined to pass the hunter's examination. On examination day, everyone looks so nervous, especially Jin Chuk, who is getting more nervous than he imagined. The examiners will move to the changing room, get changed into inspection suits, and follow the assignment to enter the inspection room. In the changing room, they are required to change their clothes and wear the clothes that are provided by the company. While in the basic inspection room, this will be the room where the basic inspection of the hunter's body will be done. They will also be examining the hunter's lung capacity and eyesight. Next in line is Jinchuk, who enters the basic inspection room. He asked what machine he was about to enter. The inspector told him that it was a machine that measured the strength of a hunter. The inspector told him to just go inside and lie down for one minute. Jinshuk, confused, asks himself what strength he is talking about. Is it level or total stats? Which of the two is the inspector referring to? The inspector told him to stay still and not move. He wants Jinshuk to still lose until he says it's done. The next step is the practical test. The hunters will pick a suit suitable for the test and wait for their turn in the waiting room. While people who do not have a personal suit are required to wear the basic suit prepared for them and located in the changing room, Jinchuk got curious because he did not feel good that they had prepared a suit for the hunters when someone interrupted his thoughts and called him. She asked if the basic inspection is done because there is something that CDO Jan Zhang wants her to give Jinchuk. He thanked her, but he did not know what she had brought. The girl answered that it was a suit for his test that was approved officially in advance. Jinchuk doubted the suit because it seemed like it did not have any special magic buffs in it. Jian Zhang said that it is made of the skin of a black ogre, so it is resistant to heat and shock. And it is the work of a famous Italian craftsman. It must be the most expensive material he used on a suit for the test. Jinchuk humbly received the gift, but for him, Jian Zhang did not have to do any of that because it was like spending money like crazy. The girl also handed a watch to Jinchuk because Jian Zhang said that there was nothing wrong with it, so he could wear it. Jinchuk analyzed the watch and he guessed that it had nothing special except the fact that it wouldn't break easily because he was expecting something hidden as it was from another world. At the practical test waiting room, everyone is ready for the test wearing their suit. The suit size fits well and feels comfortable for Jinchuk. 
Also, quite a lot of people prepare their own suits. While preparing their own suits, one official man raised and hung one innocent-looking man using only his one hand badly mad and shouting at him for not doing as he had told him because he put the ice in the coke when he just told him to bring it to him. He even shouted that all the officials were like him. And there was nothing anyone could do with the official's attitude. Jinchuk walks towards them and observes that the official is familiar to him. Jinchuk interrupted them to stop because he might kill the man. The official did not listen to him and asked who Jinchuk was, but Jinchuk just ignored his question and told him to just let the man go because it was not important to know him anyway. The man got mad at him because it seemed like everyone was trying to pick a fight with him and asked Jinchuk if he knew him. Jinchuk did not hesitate to place his hand on the official's arm to let the innocent guy go. The official admits that he has heard Jinchuk's good basic stats because he saw Jinchuk on the Shelton video, then unpredictably put a fire on the innocent man. Hello guys, in this video we will discuss a manhwa called Leveling Up with Thumbs Up Part 2. The red-haired man uses his skill and blows fire on the innocent and normal man with whom he fought. Jinchuk got frustrated because he was doing it just to hurt his pride. Jinchuk told him that he couldn't harm ordinary people using his skill, but the red-haired man confidently bragged that he was protected by the International Hunter Protection Treaty, so he did not have any worry about hurting ordinary people. His answer disgruntled Jinchuk to think that hunters would use the immunity that was given to protect their lives in an inferior way. He can't let a bastard like him leave like nothing happened when he was just going to tell him off moderately and let it go. Jinchuk emphasized his hand on the red-haired man's arm, causing him to have a big injury that hurts his arm. The official asks him if he is using the cursed skill, as he did in the clip when he was fighting with Shelton. Jinchuk agreed with him. He also added that he is using his healing skill, so that even if he can't stop the burns, it will still heal right away. The man can't believe what he has just heard and lashes out even more at the innocent man. Jinchuk told him to calm down. He thought that he was being rude since he had just awakened and should not boast his strength in a place where everyone is dangerous. And if he continues to be hard-headed, he will get embarrassed, though they should already stop because if he causes a bigger fuss than he did, he may even kick out. Jinchuk's words free the innocent guy from the awakener who blew a fire on him. Jinchuk asks the guy if he's okay. Gradually, he will be healed right away. Jinchuk's system flaunted that he received 10 thumbs up and staff member is expressing his sincere gratitude for his kindness. Jinchuk asks him who the man is that he fought with. He told Jinchuk that he was awakened from the Society of Flame by a man named Yum Radu. He was awakened not too long after. Yum's surname seems familiar to Jinchuk. As a support hunter, Yum saw a lot of newbies with hunter disease back in his days and for him, they needed to be taken on once without any mercy to wake them up. The coordinator announced that the examiner was entering and that everyone should be in line. Yoon Rumi showed up, told the hunter's examiners that they were all too full of energy and introduced herself. Since many of the examiners did not know her, she told the examiners that she belonged in the politics and military division, the one specializing in killing or torturing a fellow awakened. Jinchuk thinks that if it's the politics and military division, it isn't in the president's personal military force. Yoon Rumi honestly told the examiners that her face and name were fake, so they didn't need to think too much about her because usually an ordinary examiner comes out. But it seems like that day was not a special case. She also added that she's also dying by playing servant to mere chicks like hunters. But since there are two rookies in the test, directly speaking, higher-ups are very interested. Jinchu guesses that it is him and Yam Radu that Yoon Rumi is talking about. At first, Yoon Rumi gave the being to be signed and shared is a memorandum stating that the government will not take responsibility if any one of them dies during the test because there are a lot of hunters with ridiculous elitism, but once they sign the contract, they are no longer citizens of the country but soldiers. In other words, that will only be their chance to turn back and do whatever they want. Jinchuk signed the contract even if it contained a scary warning. Since everyone has agreed, it will be strange to return after taking all the steps. Next, Yoon Rumi discussed the rules. The examiners will enter the dungeon and hunt and they will be graded according to the rules. Everything that the chicks do will be recorded unless they have their own self-recording device. They can still use it if the means of communication are blocked, so social media will not work. Lastly, the examiner is the most vicious person in the history of the politics and military division. So the organization does not care whether the examiner may die or not, so they should care for their own lives. Yoon Rumi once again asked everyone if there was still no one who wanted to turn back, but still, no one responded to her. So she took it as no one wanted to back out, they started to proceed to the next schedule, so Yoon Rumi instructed them to wear their blindfolds. The examinees wore blindfolds that limited their senses and were lined up into groups of five. After choosing a weapon of their choice, they entered the dungeon through the gate. 
The examinees are placed in a small stone chamber built throughout the dungeon. Right now, five people are scattered in each corner of the dungeon. The orders are random, so the examiners cannot complain if they are teamed up with someone they don't like. They start catching the monsters at their location and go up to the crystal ball in the middle. The test is over once the crystal ball is shattered. The hunter's examiners take off their blindfolds and the test begins. Static radio frequencies filled with the screams of panic set the tone for this part of the story. Blindfolds that blocked the examinee's vision when they began the test. Our protagonist, Jikyuk Eum, just entered a facilitated dungeon for the purpose of completing his hunter's exam. He is supposed to arrive with other hunter examinees so they can work together as a team, but he is instead greeted by a blue-lit room with a grand door waiting on the other side. He opens the door and enters, then hears yells of annoyance and frustration. The source of the yelling came from Yam Madu, a fellow hunter, who made a fuss due to his massive ego back at the preparation stage of the exam. The two loathed each other's presence and were about to engage in another argument before it was interrupted by another pair of hunters. Twin hunters, Bam Jin Ah and Jin Wu, introduced themselves to the others before proceeding to inquire about the radio broadcast. Hunters were begging for assistance on the radio due to a sudden dungeon explosion and the high risk of it converting into an irregular dungeon. Jinna asks if any of them know if this incident is part of the exam. Yamadu gives a vague response and assumes that it might be on purpose due to how strong he is. He then claps his fists, which can be seen as him showing off the gear he is currently donning, which consists of expensive items. Another hunter comes in from the back and is introduced as Yamadu's distant cousin. Jichiuk introduces himself to the twins but stops mid-sentence when he hears Yamadu and his cousin splitting off from the group. Chinchuk and the twins try to stop them from acting on their own. Yamadu, however, ignores the three of them with his massive ego and proceeds to move further in regardless of the consequences that may occur from their actions. Yamadu's cousin approaches the next door and pushes it open. The wind suddenly blows out and the cousin notices something approaching the door. A large, red, scaly arm reaches out for the cousin. Yamadu manages to pull his cousin out of the way. A large red monster walks out the door and is identified as a lizard man. A lizard man is something that even veteran hunters struggle with, and it is faster and stronger than a regular goblin, especially in caves due to its improved senses from its skin. Jikyuk is skeptical about the fact that the government sent out this kind of monster for beginner hunters who have yet to finish their exams. Yamadu and his cousin act cocky as they belittle the monster and initiate the fight as fire envelopes their fists. Chikchuk manages to identify what kind of skill they will be using. He infers that Yam Madu will be using an area of effect flame type of skill, despite their location being a narrow stone passageway. Chikchuk then pulls out his twin blades, activates multiple skills simultaneously, and launches his next move. From outside the dungeon, CDO Ji Jong observes the dungeon's status and notices its sudden growth at an alarming rate. There is no way to access the dungeon from the outside due to the ceiling of the gate, meaning there is no way to stop the exam. The examinees have no choice but to run away and hold on until the growth stops or destroy the dungeon's core in order to survive. Existing dungeons growing as hunters level up is the definition of dungeon growth. Monsters that exist in a dungeon that is about to grow are replaced with stronger monsters, and the map becomes more complex but offers better rewards in return. All of this information is only known to one person, John Jihan. He worries for Jichiuk for he may be a singularity that will change the future, and the sudden growth of the dungeon is proof of that. John Jihan had to make a choice. Should he keep watching from the sidelines until the end, or should he go back again? No matter how far the world moves forward, until he gets the answer that fits his standards, he will forever remain stagnant. Back inside the dungeon, Jichuk is trying his best to block off the flames that come from Yam Madu's attacks. He finds Yam Madu's negligence towards his surroundings repulsive and reckless. The Gatu window pops up and reveals a quest for the protagonistic hunter. It tells him to defeat the Lizardman and get out of the growing dungeon. If he manages to accomplish this, he will receive 100 thumbs up, an additional bonus, and an intermediate skill exchange ticket. This newfound information surprises Jichuk, because the dungeon that was said to be a test dungeon was actually an intermediate dungeon, which proves a higher risk of danger to the examinees. The Lizardman donning deep red scales received heavy blows of intense heat. Yamadu sends out a flurry of flame attacks that manage to hit the monster's vital parts and defeat it. As the defeated monster falls down, another wave of monsters comes in. Yamadu and his cousin send one blow after another and continue to struggle as the number of enemy forces continues to increase. Chikyuk and the twins watch from the sidelines and express their annoyance towards Yamadu and his cousin for not having any intention to work with them as a team. Chikyuk thinks for a moment when he notices something about the monsters. 
He worked with the corpses of Lizardmen when he was still a hunter's assistant. Their skins are normally green, which makes Jichiuk infer that these Lizardmen are different from ordinary Lizardmen. One of the twins points out the door and mentions that Yam Madu and his cousin are about to escape to the next room. He displays his massive ego and gives the other examinees a chance to join him by getting down on their knees and starting to beg. The twins find his actions repulsive and then Jichuk begins to explain. Flame-attributed skills are better used to hunt monsters than injure humans, which can explain why Yam Madu is cocky about his current position. After hearing that explanation, the twins had no choice but to agree, but they still express their frustrations. Chikshuk then proceeds to suggest the twins join Yam Madu since his skill set might give them higher chances of survival. The twins pause and refuse to join Yam Madu, for he might be the type of person to use them as a shield when in danger. So they decide to team up with Chikshuk, who gladly accepts their company and hopes that they will get along with him despite him saying he is lacking. The twins disagree with the idea that he is lacking due to his display of strength during the preparation stage. They then both agree to showcase their skills to Chikchuk. Jin Ah is revealed to be a blacksmith who uses a large hammer while fighting. Jin Wu, on the other hand, uses his sewing ability to create traps and attack enemies. Chikchuk wonders if this combination is a great one. He then notices that Yam Madu and his cousin have already left, and they also prepare to leave. While catching the lizardmen, Yam Madu and his cousin push forward without a break, while Jinshuk carefully followed behind them, while studying the lizardmen's inscriptions carved on the dungeon's walls with his eye of observation skill. He then discovers a hidden space behind a mural painting of a worshipping golden demon god. Chikyuk asks Jin Ah to break down the wall with her hammer. She then builds up her mana to be able to use her power hammer skill, and swiftly smashes a giant hole in the wall that reveals the hidden path. They secure a passage and enter the hidden devil's temple. They manage to partially remove the attention of the lizardmen as they enter the hidden path. Jin Ah shows signs of fatigue after using her skill, which surprises Jichuk at the sight of her being exhausted after using her skill once. The three of them begin to investigate their surroundings and are surprised to see a massive space that managed to become hidden. They infer that it may be a temple, and the space that they are currently in may be a secret passage used by the ascetics. Jichuk then mentions that they can find useful hints in the murals and stone statues that can lead to other hidden paths. He then pauses for a moment and prepares a countermeasure for whatever may happen as they move forward. He cast a buff to the twins that improve their agility and attack temporarily. They proceeded to move forward and through the passage, the three of them managed to avoid the passages filled with lizardmen. Meanwhile, Yan Madu and his cousin continued to push their way through without knowing the existence of the hidden passageway. A few moments later, Jichuk's party finally reached the end of the passage and inferred that they may have outran Yan Madu by quite some distance, and they prepare to leave the hidden passage. They hear incoming enemy footsteps and begin to prepare for battle. Jinchuk assumes the lead role and reminds the twins to maintain formation. The three of them dash ahead and initiated the attack. Jinchuk takes down a few of them by slicing them to pieces with his twin blades. Jin Wu manages to shirt one of them with his sharp teeth, and his sister bludgeons a few of them to death. Their strategy is to have the twins finish off the lizardmen that Jinchuk had severely damaged. The twins begin to wonder if Chichik really has never done this before. The sound of corpses dropping to the ground echoed throughout the passageway. Chichik and the twins wrap things up with their recent battle. After dealing with the lizardmen, Chichik and the twins began to take care of the corpses. They each pulled out a dagger and made incisions in the monster corpses. Blood splattered all over the place as they quickly extracted their magic crystals while collecting their blood and scales. Then Chichik pulls out a skill from the God 2 window. He purchases Scrooge's Visionary Alchemy, which allows him to use low-cost materials for bulk productions, and luckily, it is still on sale, due to an event. The twins notice him plotting something and begin to watch him. Chichiev then activates the Scrooge Alchemist Survival Camp skill, which summons a complete alchemy set that includes tools, 50 empty potion bottles, and 30 neutralizers. The twins are surprised by what they are seeing and Chichiev explains that he just learned an alchemy skill, which confuses the twins even more. He proceeds to tell them that they will use their newly acquired monster materials to test out his new skill. Purple liquid began to boil aggressively while emitting an ominous aura. A pop-up window then explains that Jichuk's success rate has dropped significantly due to his low level of alchemy. The current success rate is 30%, and due to this, failure is inevitable and the used materials are destroyed. It takes a few more attempts before Jichuk finally has a successful result. Fireworks started to launch from the cauldron and explode while he showcased his success. The result was a Lizardman's Stamina Booster, an ancient Stamina Booster made by using Lizardman materials. 
It's a highly concentrated stamina potion used to constantly regenerate physical and mental wounds and increase agility for six hours. Chichia confers that the potion would sell for a few hundred thousand won per bottle. After a few more attempts, a total of five bottles were made after a series of failures and successes. After that, they had a repeating cycle of killing and extracting ingredients from the lizardmen and converting those ingredients into items. The number of likes Jichiak received was steadily increasing. After finishing off another wave of lizardmen, Jichiak received a notification that he had received a total of 100 likes, which resulted in the completion of the bonus quest, and that surprised him. The Gatu window then asks if he would like to receive the bonus reward now despite not clearing the main quest yet. He accepts without hesitation and receives a notification that his system will be updated, which surprises him. A rapid flow of mana enveloped the God 2 window for a moment, then notified Jichuk that the update was complete. The update includes that from now on, he can receive likes from his enemies as well, which confuses him. Suddenly, a couple more lizardmen came sprinting towards Jichuk. He prepares to counterattack it by dashing towards the upcoming monsters, and he manages to slice off their necks and limbs. Mid-fight, he receives a notification that the fear he is causing by the fight is allowing him to receive likes from his enemies. Chikyuk expresses his favorability for the new update as he kills another wave with the twins. He thinks to himself that this update feels like cheating. They then finish off the remaining lizardmen, and by the time they were about to be exhausted from battling the lizardmen, they notice something at the end of the passage. A huge door awaits at the end of the passage, and they infer that it is the boss's room. The twins express their excitement for their progress and ask Jichiuk if they are almost done with the dungeon. He pauses for a moment and replies that he is not sure, but a boss monster will usually be waiting at the end of the dungeon. They haven't seen the boss monster yet on their way here, so he will definitely be behind the door. The twins worry about the boss monster when, all of a sudden, the door behind them slams wide open. Yells of constant taunting came out of the open doors, and they came from Yom Madu, his cousin and other hunter examinees. Yum Madu expresses his sarcasm by telling Chichuk and his party that they impressed him, and that Yum Madu did not think they could make it to where they are in one piece. Chichuk is a bit down about the fact that Yum Madu is still alive, but is surprised by the number of people behind him and is wondering if other examinees joined Yum Madu's party. Chichuk and the twins remain silent and stared at Yum Madu and his large party approaching them. A moment of tension filled the passage for a moment before Yao Madu's egotistical mouth broke the silence by telling Jichuk and the twins to screw off and that he would be the one opening the door, which Jichuk allowed despite the risks. Jichuk allows Yao Madu to be controlled by his own ego and opens the grand doors that lead into the boss room despite not knowing what dangers may be waiting on the other side. Yao Madu scopes out the initial area behind the door for any possible dangers. He gives the all-clear before setting off to venture further inside the boss's room. The room is too dark to measure how big or small it is, and since the hunters cannot see, they become slightly fearful of the current situation. Jin Wu infers that there are no traps at the moment, but warns the others to remain vigilant. Jikyuk hypothesizes that the room they are in is indeed the location for the final mission. Yam Madu gathers mana towards the palm of his hand to activate a flame attribute spell and turns his hand into a torch. The flame was able to light up the path just enough for them to walk through, and they traverse the long passage cautiously. As they traverse the passage, they suddenly hear a voice loudly demanding offerings. It surprises everyone, and while they are in shock, the door behind them begins to slowly close. The examinees notice it too late, and the doors slam shut in front of them, causing them to panic and become hysterical. The voice echoes throughout the room, demanding two people. In the center of the room, a spotlight shone above a huge statue. A man donned in the color red with wings rose on his back and horns that could be pointier than a rapier. It catches everyone's attention, and they slowly realize that the statue is actually a demon. It watches the examinees with its blood-red eyes as they panic and scramble to get into formation and prepare to battle. Jikshik and the twins fall back for now, and he wonders what is going on since he cannot feel any murderous intent coming from the demon. He also notices that the demon keeps muttering its demands for two people's offerings. Everyone had already moved away from the demon and begun to observe and strategize a plan. Yam Madu's cousin mentions that the demon does not move at all and keeps on asking for offerings. Yam Madu agrees and wonders if it is some kind of trick or maybe they do not have to fight it at all. Jishit volunteers to scout and investigate the demon, which makes even the egotistical Yam Madu compliment him for his fearlessness. Chichuk slowly and cautiously approaches the demon and reaches the base of the pedestal the demon is standing on. He wonders why the demon is not moving and why it keeps saying the same thing over and over again. Does it have no intention of attacking the examinees? He notices two spikes erected in front of the pedestal. 
Upon closer inspection, there are fullers carved on them to allow blood flow. It's a sudden realization and infers the goal of the last mission. He then calls the attention of everyone present in the room and mentions that the demon will not be moving for now. However, he explains that the muttering of the demon is about demanding that two people impale themselves on the spikes and sacrifice themselves. This sends everyone into a frenzy and curses the government for assigning this kind of dungeon to new hunters. Jixia thinks to himself about how odd this situation is. There has never been a test with this level of difficulty before and what's more, is even asking for sacrifices. Hunters are people just like everyone else, and it may be one thing if someone accidentally dies during the exam due to the dungeon's nature. However, it is a completely different story if these hunters are asked to be impaled and become sacrifices. Pounding on the door can be heard on the other side of the room. Yamadu sends out a flurry of punches and attempts to open the door by force. He screams in frustration, and that causes a domino effect on everyone else in the room, making them panic and fall into despair. Jikchik worries that since everyone is a test taker with no experience, they will find situations like this overwhelming. One of the examinees became so desperate that they drew their sword and dashed towards the standing demon. He strikes the demon, but to no avail. His sword shatters into multiple pieces and the demon's eyes start to glow, and it shoots out lasers towards the attacking examinee. This deletes the upper half of the examinee, instantly killing him. This situation catches everyone's attention and was the last thing that was needed to send a wave of despair to everyone in the room. The examinees became fearful for their lives and began running towards the door in a plea for their lives. This demon is in a different league in comparison to the other monsters they fought on the way here. Screams and panic fill the boss's room as examinees scramble after seeing one of them killed instantly by the demon who waits at the center of the room. They begin to debate what to do in their current situation. Some say that they should give in to the demon's demands and some question their sanity for voluntarily sacrificing themselves in this situation. Others crumble down into despair and hysteria and Jichiak has no choice but to be an audience member in this chaotic situation. A number of examinees started to suggest how to decide who has to be sacrificed and some countered that statement with the moral rights of human beings. This leads to one argument after another, which leads to an internal dispute between each examinee in the room, but all of that stops when they hear someone knocking on the door. Yam Madu gathers everyone's attention and tells everyone to pick the weakest link in the room. He proceeds to suggest that everyone should fight it out and sacrifice the losing side. He believes the stronger hunters would be more useful and deserve to live longer than the weak. This makes one of the hunters have a realization. He explains to everyone that the production type hunters are the weakest, and they would have the lowest dungeon contribution points. Some agree and demand the production type hunters identify themselves and step forward. Some of the production type hunters plead for mercy, while some of them point to the twins in Jinchuk's party by calling them weak and useless. The twins are surprised by their statements and Jin Wu steps forward to protect his sister. Jikyuk worries for the twins as the other hunters argue about the fate of the production type hunters. They came to the conclusion that they should pick the twins as the sacrifice since they are exactly two and someone has to end their lives for the greater good. Yao Madu grins as he believes that this situation is turning out more favorable than he thought. Seeing how the person he hates managed to bring those twins all the way to the boss's room, he becomes curious about how the situation will unfold and wants to see Chikchiak struggle after the humiliation he dealt to Yao Madu. Chikchiak cannot completely hate the examinees who are targeting the twins because he already knows how weak humans are. Everyone struggles to live in fear, as long as they are not the victims. Chichiup tries to gain everyone's attention and tries his best to straighten out everyone's thoughts before they attempt to become murderers. He explains to the examinees that if they sacrifice innocent people, all 18 of them will become murderers. So, he suggests that if they fight together, they can avoid any unnecessary bloodshed and he hopes everyone will join him. He tells everyone that there are no dungeons that cannot be conquered. There was a moment of silence before they all began to agree with Chichiup. But they still hesitated because they couldn't guarantee that there wouldn't be any victims. He strongly replies that if that happens, they will find another way that will let everyone live. The other examinees still express their hesitation, but Jichik reassures them that he will be taking the lead, and if anything bad happens, he pleads with them to sacrifice him. He then asks if that is enough for them to trust him. The room fills with the voice of the examinees' discussions and debates, and Jinchuk has to make sure everyone does not lose their sense of reason, and then formulate a plan after that. He then receives notifications from people who agreed with him and were encouraged by what he said. Jin An notices the change and praises Jichuk for removing the hostility in the examinee's eyes and he replies that it is only the beginning. Moments later, seeing how confident Jichuk is, the examinees began to come to their senses and started to prepare to overcome this crisis. Jichuk receives another notification, which points out that he has fully mastered the eyes of observation skill. 
The skill has evolved into a new one called Eyes of Insight, which allows him to assess more objects in detail and view the statuses of some monsters. Once the skill Eye of Insight has been completely mastered, it will be able to evolve to the skill Eye of Penetration. He infers that the reason he was able to fully master the skill is probably because of the murals and paintings that he had to identify along the way. He tests out his newly evolved skill on the demon that is waiting in the middle of the room. The skill reveals that the demon is actually a greater demon that has the water attribute and its level and weakness remain hidden. It is waiting in the temple to evolve and become a stronger demon by receiving two awakeners as sacrifices and evolving into a big-scale demon baron. Jichiev gathers the attention of the test takers and relays the information that he just gathered, learning that it must be weak to wood and lightning attribute attacks. Moments later, Jinna proceeds to use her blacksmith skills to buff Jichiev's weapons, which will last for an hour. Jichiev then leads the charge of attack towards the greater demon, and he summons a low-ranking spirit of darkness before landing their first attack. Jichiev summons the Black Dragon of Darkness spirit by reciting a certain chant, which catches everyone's attention and they cannot help but feel impressed by his abilities. He then confirms from the demon's previous attack that a ray of light would be shot from his eyes and he will act in self-defense. The demon threatens our protagonist as he dashes in and plans to use all the darkness bottled up inside during his secondary school days. The low-ranking spirit of darkness that he summoned is inflicting a curse on the demon's eyes at rapid pace, which catches the greater demon off guard. It tries to blast the darkness that binds his vision with his laser eyes, but it is proven to be useless and continues to struggle. The examinees are astonished by the effect of Chichik's ability. Chichik's gamble was worth it. Earlier during the first attempt of attack, Chichik could tell that the greater demon had relatively low magic resistance, but instead had high physical attack resistance when he blocked and shattered the sword, and it had high magic attack power by the display of its attacks. Equilibrium will always be present in dungeons, and that is why there will never be a boss monster without any weakness. The greater demon jumps high into the air, flaps his wings to begin to fly, and lands down in front of its pedestal. The examinees prepare to initiate an attack by utilizing skills that have either wood or lightning attributes. They all gather together and form their formations before proceeding to launch the attack. The level of a dungeon can be easily estimated by looking at its monsters, and that is why many experts believe in dungeon administrators, that dungeons never occur naturally and someone must manually balance them. The greater demon swings its flailing arms around, hoping it will hit the examinees. The greater demon manages to hit quite a few of them while taunting them ominously. A hunter almost gets sliced by the greater demon, but gets blocked by Jichik's blade. Jichik taunts the greater demon because he thought it would be slow considering how long it took it to shoot the beam of light from its eyes, but that was his mistake. This also disproves his dungeon balance theory. The demon identifies Jichuk as the caster who took his vision, which allows Jichuk to taunt the greater demon by saying that it is sad that it was not able to kill him with his laser beam. Jichuk has to do his best to keep drawing the greater demon's attention so that the other examinees can attack its back. He then takes a huge step back and taunts the greater demon as he activates his provocation skill, Scream of the Wild. He leads the greater demon into a chase that ends with the greater demon slamming its face against the door at the end of the room. The greater demon is impressed by Jichik's skills and tactics as it sends a flurry of slashes towards him. Jichik manages to dodge the greater demon's attacks, but he cannot maintain it forever, and the other examinees cannot help him because the target is too fast for them. Jichik dodges a punch from the greater demon and steps on its shadow, then activates the shadow steel skill. Upon activation of the skill, the greater demon's movement speed and part of his defense have been reduced, and Jichik absorbs the stolen movement and speed. This gives the examinees an advantage and the greater demon, on the other hand, feels the effects of the skill. The mana that filled the room trembled as the examinees launched barrages of projectile-type spells with various attributes embedded in them and created an explosion on impact. The examinees are giving it their all to damage the greater demon and Jichik encourages everyone to keep it up as they heavily damage the greater demon. The tough exterior of the greater demon began to visibly crack from the damage of the attacks, but this made the greater demon smirk and taunt the examinees. The greater demon pushes through the attacks, which catch Jichyuk off guard and now everyone is at risk of danger. The greater demon flies through walls of flames, magic, and mana with ease and some of the examinees get caught off guard, but a yell echoes throughout the room. A man with a pair of red boots catches everyone's attention. Yamadu musters all the mana he can and focuses it on the palms of his hands. The gathered mana ignites with the use of the flame attribute and sets a flame that rises up chaotically. Yamadu tells everyone to get out of his way, for he will be the one who deals the final blow to the greater demon as he gets into his battle stance. 
Balls of fire make their way towards the greater demon with the intent of ending life. Yamadu displays his maximum firepower as he launches one fireball after another and dashes towards the greater demon. The greater demon senses the upcoming projectiles and tries to defend itself, only to fail in the process. The flurry of fireballs land on the greater demon and its surroundings and each fireball erupts into massive explosions that fill the room with flame and embers, and the greater demon gets enveloped by the impact of the attack. The greater demon jumps out of the flames and drops to his knees. Yum Madu continues to taunt the greater demon and manages to get close to it. He then wraps his fists with fiery flames and sends a flurry of blows in the greater demon's direction. However, the greater demon does not find the rampaging Yum Madu difficult and dodges his attacks with ease. The more his attacks do not reach the greater demon, the more Yum Madu becomes frustrated. The greater demon takes advantage of his frustration and proceeds to taunt him by saying his combatability is quite lacking in comparison to his skills. Clouded by frustration, Yum Madu did not notice the greater demon backflipping above him. The greater demon lands and then sends the surprise Yum Madu flying across the room and slamming his body against the boss room's walls. Yum Madu sticks for a moment against the wall before dropping to the ground with a massive impact. This catches everyone's attention and Yam Madu's cousin rushes to Yam Madu's aid and pleads for the other's help. He checks out Yam Madu's condition and tells everyone that he is alright. Chichi questions his train of thought, for he rushed into a stronger enemy without any evasive skills. The greater demon laughs ominously at the examinees and commends them for their effort to annoy it. One of the examinees notices something on the greater demon's back. Below its wings is an exposed part of its body that is not protected by the hard exterior, which means their attacks are starting to work on the greater demon. They notice something in the exposed area. Something was shining inside the demon, a large bead of some sort. Jikyuk recognizes the bead and recalls what the proctors mentioned at the beginning. If the crystal ball that acts as the dungeon's core is destroyed, then the test will end. Liquids begin to flow out of the greater demon's back, and then it began to shout threats of death towards the examinees. The liquids began to gush out like a fountain or a garden hose that was aimed at the examinees. The examinees try their best to dodge the suspicious liquid, and then they were able to identify it as the greater demon's venom. They try to fall back so they can avoid the greater demon's deadly venom. This is the final attempt of the greater demon, so naturally it will go all out to kill its targets. The greater demon spews out a great amount of venom as it yells out more threats to kill them. The venom came in like a continuous tsunami and managed to hit some of the examinees. Jikyuk dodges the venom and strategizes a plan on how to defeat the greater demon. He then concluded that he had no choice but to use a certain item. He pulls out a bottle that contains Lizardman's Berserker pills. It reduces the user's stamina in exchange for increasing all their stats and overconsumption may lead to the user's death. The effects of the pill only last for 30 seconds, which is a gamble that Chichiuk has no choice but to take. He quickly pops the pill into his mouth and the countdown begins. He swallows the pill, and then a surge of energy flows inside of him. His eyes turn red and the status window mentions that his stats have been increased by 200%, but that he is losing stamina at an alarming rate. It then mentions that Jichiuk will perish after 30 seconds, so he has to remove the pill's effect in time. He then opens the U2 window and invests all his remaining likes into his strength. By consuming all his likes, his strength stat has grown to a B rank, and with the Berserker pill's effect he has temporarily gained an S rank. Mana flows out of Jichiuk's body as the muscles in his body expand and harden. He can feel the energy flowing into his body, but he can also feel his life force being drained at a rapid pace. The greater demon just gushed out another wave of venom and asked the examinees if they could keep going, to which Jichiuk quickly responded behind it. This catches the greater demon off guard as the berserk examinee, Jichiuk, dashes towards it. Time is currently running out and Jichiuk dashes towards the greater demon and knocks it measures away. Jichiuk soars from the air towards the greater demon and stabs it with one of his twin blades in the chest. He has to finish off the greater demon in less than 20 seconds, if he wants to live. The great demon is surprised by the sudden growth of strength in his attacker. He then rips out both the greater demon's wings and breaks open the greater demon's hard red shell, exposing the large bead inside of it. Chikyuk raises his blade and strikes the bead. A few seconds later, with less than 10 seconds remaining, Chikyuk barrages the large bead with multiple slashes from his twin blades. As plentiful as his strikes were, the bead remains intact and time is running out. Jikyuk is starting to become desperate after every passing hit. The bead is too hard to the point that it even shatters one of his twin blades, but despite that, he does not stop striking it as hard as he can in hopes that it will break any time soon. Then at last, at the center of the bead is a large crack, and Jikyuk does not hesitate to seize this opportunity. He uses his broken blades and stabs the crack multiple times with his remaining time left. The time is up, and the bead is now partially shattered. 
The Berserker buff is being deactivated and he has spent a great deal of stamina. As a result of using the buff, Jikyuk feels a shock throughout his body, and then he will lose consciousness in 10 seconds. As Jishik's consciousness fades away, the bead explodes and releases massive waves of mana and energy. Jishik's body launches high in the air from the blast of mana, and inside his thoughts, we hear his thoughts about the Berserker pill and how it was only needed in emergencies. But thanks to it, they survived. He crashes into the ground and finally loses consciousness. Notifications begin to pop out and showcase the completion of the dungeon. It then begins to calculate the points according to everyone's individual contribution. Jichiat lands in first place with a score of 24,671 points. He manages to clear the hidden quest, and the system begins to determine the hidden quest's reward. Everyone observes their system windows, and after a moment of silence, they begin to express their gratitude to Jichiat, who then rushes to his aid. Before Jichiat can finally rest, he wonders how many likes he will receive if he posts his body camera recording. Then a notification pops up and states that the system version 2.0 update has been completed. As he closes his eyes, he sees the starry sky, and below it are figures of light watching above him. A notification states that the gods have taken notice of him. Outside the dungeon gate is a crowd of multiple people that consists of reporters, hunters, and bystanders. They are all curious about the fate of the examinees who are stuck inside. In a different area that is slightly away from the gate, politics and military division member Yoon Rumi is on standby and is annoyed by the presence of the reporters. Her subordinate approaches her and lets her know that the rescue team is on standby. He also lets her know that the reaction energy that they got from the dungeons is comparable to a B-ranked dungeon, and that the dungeon gate will reappear soon. Yoon Rumi could not believe the current situation. The gate chosen was to be used as a test dungeon due to its low difficulty level. Failure is an often occurring occurrence, but there has never been an incident where someone has died in this dungeon. She then explains that she has prepared the safety measures to the best of her abilities, but if the dungeon suddenly grows into a B-rank, then it would be disastrous. She worries about the lives of the examinees who are stuck inside and wonders how many of them will survive. She thinks so deeply about this situation that she does not hear the upcoming footsteps approaching her. An arm reaches out to her and places its hand on Yoon Rumi's shoulder. It grabs her attention, and she wonders who is touching her. She is greeted by a familiar face as they ask her what's with the serious look on her face. It is the mechanical genius who greets her. Big Ajong sucks on her lollipop as she faces Yoon Rumi and smirks in front of her. She then pulls out her lollipop and points it towards what is revealed to be her junior, offering her a taste of her sweets. A fleet of white discs can be seen hovering over Big Ajong and her junior, Yoon Rumi. Yoon Rumi is surprised and impressed by the number and quantity of these discs. The discs approach the large gate, and they begin to emit beams of light that aim in the direction of the gate. These floating discs are revealed to be medical drones that are provided by the mechanical genius, Big Ajong. Yoon Ruby tells her that she already requested medical drones from the Ministry of Governmental Affairs, but Big Ajong replies by saying that the drones she provided are medical drones with a few extra features. Yoon Ruby is in no position to refuse Big Ajong's support, which forces a smile for her. She can bet that those people from the Ministry of Governmental Affairs also know that the bonus feature of Big Ajong's drones is meant to explore this world. The gate then shows signs of finally opening, which kickstarts the personnel on standby to get into gear and wait for what is about to come out. The rescue team waits by the gate and sees the examinees running out of it in waves. The examinees shout out and express their success, and they get to experience freedom. The rescue team runs in to aid the injured and escorts them to a safe area. Yoon Rumi scopes out the area and is surprised by the conditions of the examinees. The reporters take notice of their conditions as well and are curious about what happened. Some of them even said that there should be more people coming out and worrying about this situation. Young Madu is carried on the shoulder of his cousin. He expresses his frustration as he walks out. Yoon Rumi and Big Ajong are curious if Yam Madu will be the ace of this test. Big Ajong explains that Yam Madu's flame attribute gives him a great advantage in monster hunting. The reporters bombard the injured Yam Madu with questions about his ranking in the test. Yam Madu yells out his frustration to the reporters and is frustrated that someone else took first place away from him. They are confused and curious about who Yam Madu is talking about. They begin to hear screams of pleas coming from the front of the gate and focus their attention on that area. The twins carry out an unconscious Jichiuk and plead for help to save their savior. A convoy of ambulances begins to roll out to escort the injured to the hospitals. Reporters begin to pack up so they can catch up to them despite not knowing which hospitals the injured will be escorted to, but they could not care any less because a super rookie that is among them was able to beat a B-ranked dungeon. That hunter and this incident will make headlines all over the world. They put their priorities on Yom Jikyuk and put aside Yam Madu's story in reserve. 
In one of the ambulances, Jikchik slowly regains consciousness. His brother Muchik is by his side, making sure his big brother is okay and telling him that they will reach the hospital soon. Jikchik then tells Muchik something about his USB. Muchik reassures him that he brought it with him and is speechless at the fact that it is the first thing he asks for. He pulls out a USB from his pocket, explains that it is the one with the largest capacity, and hands it over to the barely conscious Jichuk. He then uses the omnidirectional video skill, which sends the saved data over to the USB, and hands it over to Muchik. Muchik reassures his brother that he will post everything on the USB before Jichuk goes back to being unconscious. Muchik expresses how proud he is of his big brother. In Jichuk's mind, notifications begin to pop in one after another. It mentions that the quest for Ward is in the process of discussion and something about a new system application. Moments later, we can see the Sewell Hospital, where our protagonist is recovering. Someone approaches Jichuk's room and lets themselves inside. Stutch can be heard approaching the resting Jichuk, and the person at hand is revealed to be John Jihan. Silence fills the room for a moment before John Jihan apologizes to the unconscious Jichuk. Jichuk barely hears and understands his voice due to the medication, however, he was able to identify who was talking. John Jihan then tells him that Jichuk is someone who is willing to risk his life in order to fight against injustice. Jichuk is confused by his statement that he is no hero. He then slowly wakes up and asks John Jihan what he is talking about. John Jihan tells him to disregard that statement because he was talking to himself. He then pulls out a syringe and explains that the venom of the greater demon mixed with the devil's curse must have caused Jichuk to have severe hallucinations. He then tells him that the syringe contains the antidote and begins to inject it into his IV drip. He also mentions that it is a one-of-a-kind elixir that will improve his stats. Jikyuk worries about what might happen if he injects it and mixes it with the IV fluids. Notifications begin to pop up one after another stating that he has been injected with the Greater Demon Serum, which removes the curse status and gives him a permanent increase in his physical strength. His pain begins to gradually go away, and he hears Zhang Jihan stepping out of the room. As he leaves, he tells Jikyuk to be careful of the curse when he begins to catch a demigod next time, or you can have someone else deal a final blow, but he knows that Jichuk is not someone who would do that. He then bids him a great rest and hopes he can take care of his own body next time. Jichuk finally wakes up and gets to inspect his surroundings. He gets off the bed and walks around the room. The room really impresses Jichuk for its size and luxury and he has Zhang Jihan to thank for that. Jichuk steps outside his room and inspects the surrounding area and in that hallway something catches his eye. A line of flowers fills a portion of the hallway. The flowers are arranged in sets of three and are designed in the form of flower wreaths. Each wreath is tied up with a pink ribbon, and on those ribbons are messages for Jichuk. The messages contain the general theme of him having a smooth and safe recovery, and some had Korean symbols that look like a thumbs up. Jichuk previously had a brief fan club meeting, but the club is bigger than he thought. Jichuk takes a trip down memory lane and recalls everything that has happened to him since the start of his journey. From the good days when he was a hunter's assistant to his awakening and now up until the conclusion of this incident he came a long way, and he is amazed at himself for the fact that he became a hunter who even received tributes from fans. He wonders what he should do to thank his fans since he did not expect this to happen because he was only there to finish his hunter's exam. He looks at the messages on each reef one by one and wonders if he should reply to his fans one by one. Moments later, he returns to his room and begins to check on the notifications he missed, he opens the status window and is notified that the calculation for the hidden quest reward has been completed, and he can receive the rewards for the main quest momentarily after the completion of the calculation. He wonders if it is normal for reward calculations to take this long, but he is glad that the hidden quest calculations ended quickly. He checks it out and it begins to relay what tasks were needed and if they were successful. First, he successfully hunted the demon without retreating in his first dungeon. Then he was able to attack the greater demon without making any sacrifices. And lastly, no lives were lost after the fight against the greater demon began. Now he has been rewarded with the greater demon's essence for having completed the three conditions of the hidden quest. Mist and mana began to circulate in front of him, and it revealed an indigo crystal orb. Jikyuk recognizes it as the bead that he smashed to defeat the greater demon. It floats down to his hands and begins to shrink to the size of a pebble. He is amazed by this item and wonders if there is an information window that will explain to him how to use it. He then receives another notification telling him to confirm version 2.0 of the system update and also receives a message from the gods. Multiple notifications popped in one after another, stating that multiple gods had asked them to offer the greater demon's essence. Various names pop in like the dog who devours the sun, the man who swallows the moon, and many more ask for the same offering. 
Chikyuk is naturally surprised by all the constant begging for the greater demon's essence and wonders why this little bee receives the desperation of the gods. He then wonders if, if he offers it, he should be rewarded for it. But he cannot give it away immediately when he does not even know its effects or who should give it to. He plans on taking his time and thinking more about this, but all of a sudden, Muchik walks into the room and calls out to him. Chikyuk greets his little brother, then Muchik hands him over a duffel bag that contains some underwear and clothes for him to change into. He then remembers something and tells Jichuk to turn on the TV because they have been talking a lot of the test incident. A newsreader interviews a dungeon specialist and they begin to discuss their information about dungeon growth. They then proceeded to discuss the hunter's exam incident and Muchuk's edited video was uploaded to YouTube. A cross-edited video of Jichuk being carried out on a stretcher and the battle inside the dungeon attracted public attention and as a result the number of likes rose exponentially. They then discuss the dungeon growing phenomenon occurring simultaneously in many countries around the world. These countries include the United States, Russia, and other parts of the world, and these apply not only in single clear dungeons but also in regenerative dungeons. The dungeon specialist mentions that Korea is the only country that has avoided annihilation in this situation, and then photos of areas that have been affected by the catastrophe are displayed on screen. The brothers are skeptical about the timing and situation. And if everything that they mentioned on screen is said to be true, it means that they can no longer trust the indicated dungeon difficulty. This sets a new goal for Jichuk, and he plans to prepare for this kind of situation by getting some powerful skills. Mushuk lets his brother know that he is done editing all the images of Jichuk on the news and shows them to him. Jichuk is surprised by the public's opinion and the praise that he is getting in the summary version, saying that he was incredible. He manages to gain 350,000 subscribers to his YouTube channel. Everything he has done in the dungeon and his willingness to sacrifice himself for others, compared with Yam Madu, made Jichuk stand out more, to the point where they received a silver button. He then checks their channel ratings and finds out he received 100,000 likes after clearing a single dungeon. He looks at his younger brother with disbelief and excitement. Footsteps echo each step taken by an unknown woman wearing her lab coat. She walks down the stairs and enters a peculiar room. The room is filled with vessels that contain monsters submerged in some sort of liquid. They remain conscious and are able to breathe in that liquid due to the life support provided by air masks. The woman walks in front of a computer setup but pauses for a moment. She sees an unknown individual sitting on an office chair in front of the monitors. She then asks why they are in her office again and then the unknown individual greets her as a longtime friend. The woman in the lab coat is revealed to be biotechnology researcher Kim Young-hee. She questions her relationship with the person sitting in the office chair. She tells Kim Young-hee that she has picked up on the sound of the ripping and development of the other world, which confuses Kim Young-hee. The unknown woman turns around and reveals herself to be Big Ajong, and she explains that the audio she heard was the sound of the dungeon growing. She hands Kim Young-hee her headphones and continues to explain that their dimension has started to rip as the dungeons in this world continue to develop, which sounds like a germinating tumor cell. Kim Young-hee grabs the headset, puts it on, and begins to listen. She is hearing a peculiar sound, which she describes as something comparable to the sound of yeast fermenting. Big Ajong can confirm what she is hearing and explains that it is the sound of the dimension ripping, and that it is the symphony of the end world. Kim Young-hee pauses for a moment to think, then responds that Big Ajong's explanation is ominous. Big Ajong replies by saying that it is only a matter of fact that everything grows in ages, and that this event will be inevitable. She then grabs a glass filled with wine and raises it towards Kim Young-hee, telling her that since the end is inevitable, they should at least have fun. She drinks the wine and Kim Young-hee questions how she can even drink in their current situation. She tells Big Ajong that they still have time left and questions her about whether she is going to save the world or not. Big Ajong allows the laboratory to fill itself with silence for a moment before telling Kim Young-hee that she knows that she is no hero and that she will take advantage of the end of the world for her dream. Kim Young-hee is a bit skeptical about her response, but a part of her is not surprised and deems it something she might do. She sits beside Big Ajong and has a deep discussion with her about the end of the world. She tells her that she just wanted to know the secrets of the world, and she wanted to find them out from living things, and this dream makes Big Ajong think that she is either pure or just naive. Kim Young Yi follows up with Big Ajong by telling her that her younger brother, Jong Jihan, came to see her. He asked Kim Young Hee to collect the demon serum for him so he could save someone. Big Ajong gets a rough idea of what she is talking about, which makes Kim Young hee question her on how Jong Ji Han knows her existence despite her living as a dead person. This makes Big Ajong feign innocence and tell her it was not her. Moments later, we get an explanation about the time when the shadow of the end of the world started to appear at the same time Jikyuk and Mushyuk recorded the opening of their silver button. 
The brothers are in the middle of setting up production on the video. Jikyuk feels the tension and nervousness building up inside of him, which makes him question himself. Mochuk starts to give motivational speeches in an aggressive manner before finishing up their preparations. After finishing filming the video, Mochuk plans to begin a hellish training session starting the next day and onward, so he will be finished editing the video shortly. He tells his big brother that he needs to train to get stronger, so that he can help his brother avoid going through dangerous situations by himself. He then tells his big brother that he will need a hunter's license too, if he wants to go into a dungeon with Chichyuk. They began filming the video and it went smoothly, along with the news of Muchuk's training, and the video was uploaded to YouTube. News that Chichyuk got better took the news press by storm along with waves of likes, and the number of likes they got was 132,000. A few days later at Chichyuk's new home we see Chichyuk roaming and touring around his new house, but somehow he cannot get used to the luxury of it. He then approaches a box in the middle of the living room that contained the drops that came from the greater demon's corpse, and the man who dropped it off mentioned that their CEO bought everything out of his pocket at an auction. He is so conscious of why John Ji Han is investing so much in him that he wonders what he expects of him to do so much. He then sighs in frustration and begins to accept his situation and John Ji Han's kindness. He then pauses for a moment before opening the store and plans what new skills he will purchase with his new likes. Before Jikshik begins purchasing new skills, he receives a notification telling him that, due to his buildup of likes, his shop has been upgraded. He is impressed by the sudden increase in options for him to choose from, but there is still a certain item he needs to search for. He has to consider a lot of things for his list of purchases. His fighting style is one that intertwines a lot of different skills, and he does not know when an opponent far stronger than him will appear again, like what happened during the test. He has considered something big to prepare for himself and browses through the store's catalog. While browsing, he also considers the idea that raising his base stats would be a better investment. Even the same skill will have different effects depending on how high the user's base stats are. He slumps back into the living room couch out of frustration and needs advice from a third party, but does not know who. He grabs his phone, types in the website link, and hopes that he will get the answer he needs. The link opens up the world's greatest online community. Fig Jichuk, who entered Fig, is currently gaining the information he needs by analyzing the community forum pages and the list of SSF's rank abilities. After scrolling for a while, he comes to the conclusion that what he needs right now the most is his skill. He then searches for Roman Elisif, an SSA rank prophet, whose level is currently black. The information type superpower got stronger after he found dungeon items and a skill book using his prophetic ability. Jichuk took inspiration from Romana's skill and successfully found the skill he wanted. He finds the Twisted Spirit of Heaven, a spirit created by the system after reproducing the personality of the bookkeeper, who was its previous lord. He then notices the terms of the purchase of the skill. It states that it must be purchased by Yu Chichuk, which surprises him and makes him glad that the system is the producer of the skill. He then checks the price of the skill and notices that the price is 10,000 likes and the greater demon's essence. He frustratedly questions why gods, heroes, and even the system itself want the essence. He starts to consider that he might be holding onto a strong, dark power that is not useful to humans. It would mean that he's going to end up doing an entity a service. He has yet to receive protection or blessing from a single god, and since there were a lot of parts that he was not pleased with and he was thinking about making a contract, he should stick to the system for this opportunity. However, no matter how hard he looks, he cannot find anyone who is sponsored by the system itself. He thinks about it for a moment, then looks at the skill again. He concludes that the skill will be very useful during future battles, so he is willing to gamble on the side that looks more fun for him. He taps on a button, and he has confirmed his purchase of the skill. The bookkeeper of the Twisted Spirit. Mena and Smoke begin to twist and turn in front of him and gather around the greater demon's essence, and the bead slowly fades away. A large orb of light appears above Jikchuk in the midst of the smoke and mist. The light dissipates and reveals a feather fan with the yin-yang symbol on the handle. The name of the fan is revealed to be Bak Wusun, the eighth twisted jiggle of the heavens. A flash of light envelopes the fan, and then the mana begins to shift its shape. It began to mold a body out of condensed mana, and the results are surprising. A man wearing historical Korean clothing appears in the midst of the mist and smokes. The man introduces himself as the spirit created by the system and asks for a name from his new master. Jikyuk is naturally surprised by the fact that the fan was actually a spirit and confirms with the spirit that he has to name it. Chikchuk inspects the spirit and infers that since he is the eighth, there will be seven others and he considers him useful. He thinks long and hard about a name because he will be working with him for a long time. He finally comes up with a name for his new spirit. Chik comes from his name, Chikyuk, and Rang from Jigul Rang. Combining these two ends up with the name Chik Rang. He asks his new spirit for his thoughts on the name. 
He loves the name and accepts it as his own. He then introduces himself as a type of development spirit created by the system with the greater demon's essence. Jikyuk is surprised by the fact that the essence was not the price for him, but rather a key material for its creation. The administrator uses this method, according to the law of causality, to convert items so that some things will not end up in the hands of God. Jikyuk then asks Shuk Rang about the identity of the administrator. However, that information has been deleted from his memory. Chikshiv then asks a different question regarding the definition and purpose of the system, to which he quickly replies that it is a nurturing device that allows humans to surpass the heavens, but any more information was deleted from his memories. He then moves on from the interrogation and begins to give Chuk Rang his first order. He tells him that he needs a strong skill that will allow him to oppose someone stronger than me. Chuk Rang accepts the command and his eyes begin to shine brightly. He begins to go back to power saving mode to be able to finish this task. Lights flash and smoke erupted in Chiuk Rang's place. And as the smoke cleared out, a baby fox stood and looked submissive to his new master, believing that it would really get along with Chichuk's viewers. Chiuk Rang, in his new appearance as a baby fox, begins to search for the skill Chichuk requested. Windows scroll down at incredible speeds in front of Chiuk Rang as he searches for the skill. Chichuk finds his new spirit impressive and considers filming him and uploading the video. He asks him if he can take a picture of him which he obliges to and says that he is able to do so with the essence of the greater demon. He asks his master, Jikyuk, if he should change his appearance and he quickly agrees with his suggestion. Multiple windows began to appear in front of Chuk Rang as he began the convert materialization skill, which changed his appearance into a cute realistic fox. Jikyuk does not hesitate to take the first photo and he takes multiple photos of the cute fox spirit. Chuk Rang worries for his master by saying that the video that he just recorded will release information about his skills. Chikchuk did not think about that idea and is grateful that Chik Ryang pointed it out. Chik Ryang then begins to elaborate to his master that he is a newly born divine spirit, or, in other words, a spirit made by God. However, with things as they are for now, Chik Ryang cannot maintain his human form for long, so he plans on staying by his side as an animal. However, if he plans on recording while he is searching for skills, just like he was doing, then the information might spread to the public, so he begs his master to tell them that he will start recording beforehand. He then shares information about how the system has made him so that he can get along with humans well, and it is all thanks to the system that he is cute and beautiful, so he allows Jichuk to take advantage of his appearance. He then tells his master that he has completed the search and shows him the results. After Chuk Rang understood Jichuk's personality, he confirmed that he could only use likes as a level one, so he excluded all the skills that would make Jichuk stronger in the short run and recommended two martial type skills with the assumption that he would get stronger. One of the skills is the heaven and earth breathing technique which has 70,000 likes. It is a unique growth-type skill that will help achieve the goal of becoming a Taoist monk who is able to control the heavens and the earth. It is an internal breathing technique as well as a Kaigon that uses the user's internal energy to slow your martial arts but develop your physicality at the same time. However, it warns the user that there is a chance that he will be unable to learn the skill while learning another martial breathing technique, and he will be unable to learn with a level 5 body. Another skill that Chuk Rang recommended was the Auto Energy Drain skill for 20,000 likes, which is an epic non-growth type. It is a skill that automatically absorbs energy from the surroundings and automatically helps with internal energy recovery and mana recovery. It accelerates the accumulation speed of internal energy, and the skill is capable of overlap. Chikik was able to buy two skill books using Chuk Rang's detailed suggestion and 90,000 likes, which resulted in Chichuk's satisfaction. He praises his new spirit and Chuk Rang humbly accepts his praise and is grateful for receiving his trust despite it being the first time they are meeting. He devotes himself to not holding back any means or ways and makes Jichuk the strongest person alive. Jichuk loves his new spirit and he starts taking pictures of him with his permission. After the photo shoot, Jichuk went right into training. Aside from the moments he ate and slept, he used all of his time to sit down and perfect the heaven and earth breathing technique. Notifications telling him that his stats increased by one point after meditation. The good thing about martial arts is that they make the user's body stronger even if he does not level up. If his mana goes up by five, then his other stats will all go up by one automatically. Chik Ryan then explains that it is because it is an internal energy breathing technique as well as Kagon. After a while, he receives a phone call about Chichik's current health conditions and is offered to try something out himself at an actual battle. He is allowed to pick one dungeon out of a provided list with a team that is prepared to go with him, and his role would be the team's center. He asks for the identities of these team members. He will know their identities on the day of the raid, and he will have full authority to dismiss unwanted members. 
Shik Ryang infers that the caller seems to be planning something but does not sense any ill intent, even though he is strange. He asks Jichyuk if he can come with him on his way to visit the caller, which he does not mind. A couple of days pass and Jichyuk arrives at the Zero Zero Center with Shik Ryang to visit the caller, who is revealed to be Zhang Jihan. They greet each other and he says that two members of the team he formed are in the same room as them. Two female hunters are presented to him. One is a muscular woman while the other has a slightly petite exterior. They introduce themselves to each other. The muscular woman is introducing herself as Zhang Jibiuk, who is the team tank and Zhang Jihan's cousin. Shikshia compares the two cousins and sees no point of similarity. Zhang Jibiak asks Jichuk to step back for a bit because she has something to demonstrate to him. She bites into a piece of jerky and chews on it as she puts on her gloves. She explains that she can lure monsters and build walls from the floor to keep them from attacking. She kneels down to the ground, pulls back her fists and imbues them with mana as she punches the floor beneath her feet. The impact causes the floor to split open into multiple blocks that are stacked upon one another, creating a large, sturdy stone wall. She continues to elaborate, saying that depending on the material of the ground, it will affect the efficiency and ability of the wall. She can also strengthen her body so she can attract monsters better, and she also likes what the monsters like to eat. Jixia praises Jubiuk's ability and asks if the jerky she is currently chewing on is actually monster meat, to which she replies by saying that it is Lizardman's tendon. The other female hunter begins to introduce herself as the party's guide and long-distance dealer. Her name is revealed to be Biel Hana which piques Jichik's curiosity about her last name being rare in Korea. She then revealed to him that she came up with it herself because she's an orphan. He then compliments her name, which makes him smile widely and purely. He then asks her for the details of her abilities as a dealer. She explains that her main ability is to manipulate animals to figure out the course of the dungeon, and she uses crossbows and daggers as weapons but enjoys setting up traps even more. Jichik is curious about her traps, and then Bile Hannah begins to demonstrate. She raises her arms and then a mesh of wires made out of mana appears out of thin air. The wires are so thin that they are almost invisible. Jibiak shows her dislike for Buell Hannah's idea of using traps, for there are a lot of hunters who do not enjoy getting trapped and asks her if it was necessary to show it on their first meeting. Jibiak continues to elaborate that the skill is used to catch monsters, but is also used to catch fellow hunters. Jichia clarifies her explanation and defines ambush attacks, and she then explains that quite a lot of hunters loathe them because they are more annoying than direct attacks. Buell Hannah waves her arms to deactivate the skill, which vanishes the wires and counter argues with Jibiuk by telling her that they will find out either way, and instead of hating it from the start, she suggests that she should just not get caught up in traps to begin with. They both display a tense atmosphere in front of Jichiuk, and he cannot approach them to interfere. Rapid footsteps can be heard approaching the room door, and then it slams open. A young man with tan skin and silver hair comes inside the room and apologizes for being tardy. He introduces himself to Jichiuk and says that his name is Shin Quan, who will be in charge of being the team healer. Jichiuk is glad to have him on the team because of his abilities. Zhang Jihan has acknowledged the fact that everyone has finished introductions and told them that the people in the room are all people that he trusts the most even if they do not know if you like it or not. He is grateful for everyone who has joined his team and John Jihan tells him that they have been chosen as the next majors of the company. They have also been receiving attention as super rookies. Jichuk gathers his thoughts and then begins analyzing. It does seem like they are rare classes, even for him, who worked as a hunter's assistant for a long time. The party may not be suited for large-scale fields, but they will stand out when they begin dealing with small, elite monsters. John Jihan also mentions that Muchik will be done with his training and will join the party once he finishes his hunter examination. John Jihan believes that the brothers will be the strongest rookie duo of all time, which is why he invests a lot in the Eon brothers, which makes Jichik curious about his little brother's current stats. Moments later, the party members move to another location after greeting one another. They move to another room to continue the meeting, and they carefully discuss the most important dungeon on the list prepared by John Jihan, which is the low-grade dungeon called the Luminous Mushroom Forest. They chose the dungeon because it has never been completely cleared by anyone. After the meeting, Chiuk Ryan reunites with his master and tells him that he was watching over John Jihan without him being noticed. Since the dungeon has been decided, they have decided that they will be going to pick up a new weapon now, which excites him. There are four main types of items made by awakened craftsmen. First are the general weapons and shields that can normally be bought at any time. They are not bad enough to be used in live battles and are aesthetically pleasing. They are not exactly cost-effective, but they still have reasonable price tags nonetheless. Secondly, there are the numbered items made from rare beasts that are difficult to catch and are only available in small quantities in one year. 
If one were to fail to purchase them that year, they are so popular that you have to wait for the next year to be able to purchase them or take the risk and buy them at the auction house. Third are limited items made from materials that are extremely rare and cannot be obtained forever in the future. Once the quantity of limited items is finished, the item is off the market forever, and the only way it can be obtained is through the auction house. Lastly, made-by-order equipment is crafted for one person by a special B-rank or higher awakened craftsman. And on top of being rare, B-ranks or higher awakened craftsmen are not moved by money. There are times where they choose the ability users that they like and make the equipment that perfectly matches the person's abilities. However, the price is ridiculously expensive, even beyond the sum of the previous types of items combined. However, the capabilities of the equipment cannot be converted into money. Chikyuk, who was looking to obtain items and equipment, decided to listen to Chiyuk Rang's suggestions. He suggested to Chikyuk that he should buy weapons from the market and then strengthen them with alchemy, so he purchases a weapon worth 500 million won and armor worth 300 million won. He bought the twin sword of an unknown craftsman and the jacket of an unknown craftsman. They then arrive at the underground alchemy room and begin to strategize a production plan. They plan on using Chikchuk's alchemy to create made-to-order items, while saving a lot of money in the process. They begin by engraving the weapon's attributes, which starts the alchemy process. He activated the alchemy ability and mana began to flow out of the cauldron in waves. After two enhancements, the twin sword of an unknown craftsman evolved into the twin sword of light and dark of an unknown craftsman, which then evolved once more and turned into the Mona Blade. The jacket of an unknown craftsman evolved into the jacket of flame of an unknown craftsman, which then evolved into the black flame top. Both Jishuk and Chuk Rang were surprised by the quality of the items. Both items have a particular attribute that stands out. Both items can only be wielded by their reinforcer, meaning Chichuk. They then continue on by beginning the next set of preparations. After obtaining the two items, Jikyuk then made various kinds of potions, emergency food, and lightly reinforced items that must be worn all the time, such as shoes, pants, shirts, and many more. Having made all the preparations, Jikyuk went on a full-scale martial arts practice. A week has passed and we arrive at the Luminous Mushroom Forest Dungeon. Among the low-level dungeons is a fairly strong place and it remains an unconquered dungeon because the boss monster has not yet been captured. Jikyuk walks along the path of the dungeon and spots the team's base camp. He is greeted by Jibiok, who tells him that everyone is waiting at the barracks. She also takes notice of Chuk Ryang and finds the spirit riding Chichuk's shoulder cute. They then proceed to discuss with one another the laws and rules that permit only one team to be allowed in this dungeon. Muchuk sprints towards his brother, which surprises him. He rarely sees Muchuk at home because he said that he was preparing to become a hunter, but he finds him inside a dungeon instead. Muchuk then explains that he already obtained the hunter certification and came in advance so he could begin raising his level. Muchuk is an A-rank hunter whose class is Archivist, someone changing the world using letters drawn from the Library of the Abyss that will strengthen the caster's body and destroy the enemy. Everyone else begins to gather around and Chichuk is surprised that John Jihan is also taking part in the raid. They set off to begin the raid and John Jihan tells Chichuk to do some simulation while watching the battles of the team members, which he obliges. Waves of mushrooms with tentacles fell for Jibiok's provocation and went after her. She then gathers mana around her knuckles and activates her barrier shield skill. Mana and energy begin to wrap around Jibiok as she gets into her battle stance. Up on a nearby hill, Zhang Jihan and Chikiok observe Jibiok's fight. They both commend her capabilities and acknowledge that she has all the qualities of a tanker. The monsters are about to reach her before she ducks down, punches the ground below her with the gathered mana from her knuckles and activates her barrier shield skill. A wall made out of the materials of the ground rose up for a few meters, and the monsters who ran after her got their bodies slammed into the wall. She then signals for the others to begin attacking. Bulhana steps in from behind Jibiak and aims her crossbow towards the monsters and fires. Muchuk sprints from the opposite side with his jewel handguns and sends out a metallic barrage towards the monsters. Jibiak then creates another wall in front of the monsters to create a funnel, which makes the monsters flow out in small numbers and allows the team to send out concentrated power towards the funnel. Chikyuk is surprised by Muchuk's choice to use ordinary handguns because ordinary firearms do not work on monsters. Zhang Jihan then explains that Muchuk is imbuing each bullet with letters. The bullets are enhanced with the words enhance and destruct. Due to Muchuk's versatile weapon, depending on how the user uses it, it will allow them to get to the top. Chikyuk cannot help but feel impressed by his little brother's transformation into a strong hunter. After moments of killing monsters, a monster mushrooms begin to divide into smaller ones and fly over the walls. They fly over Jibiyuk, but thankfully, Bielhana has already set up some traps in advance and catches the flying mushrooms with a trap. 
They try to take advantage of the situation, but the numbers begin to overwhelm the trap, which makes Muchox switch to close-range combat. He then sends a flurry of blows with his word-imbued fists and takes down a bunch of the monsters. This impresses Jikshuk and Shukriane, but something else catches their attention. Flying pigs called Pig Angels are sent out in flocks by Shin Quan towards the other teammates. Each group of pigs grants the team members the necessary healing and continues to give them the needed support as they finish up the waves of mushrooms. Chikchuk is impressed by their team's synergy and combination and notices that they get along pretty well. Chikchuk looks at Chiyuk Rang, and they both nod at each other, signaling that the observation phase is over, and they shall begin to slowly participate as well. The other team members finish clearing out the mushroom monsters and discuss the distribution of loot with Zhang Jihan. Chichiuk still questions the reason why Zhang Jihan came with them in the raid since he is not participating in the hunt and seems like he has another goal in mind. Buell Hanna begins to praise Muchuk's performance since it should not be easy for a long-range distance dealer to fight in short-range fighting. He then responds to her comment by saying, Chichiuk can do way better than him. Chichiuk approaches the two, and as he gets closer, he gets the feeling that Bail Hanna is interested in Muchuk. Zhang Jihan gathers everyone's attention and explains that Jichuk plans on participating in the next battle. Everyone thought about it for a moment and came to the conclusion that they should allow him to participate. She confirms with Jichuk that he was a short-range dealer, so she assigns him to take care of the guys that she misses. She also confirms that he can do crowd control skills, which he agrees to but clarifies that he can only do one at a time. She then acknowledges that his presence will greatly help and that they can make the necessary tactical changes and with his skills, they have the chance to venture further in the dungeon. Muchuk also elaborates that it is better for him to join in as soon as possible so he can have a lot more content for the broadcast. Shin Quan tells Jichuk that he will be watching the video later, after the completion of the raid. They have to confirm their tools and they prepare to move. John Jihan calls out to Jichuk and makes him promise him one thing. He says he will not touch the boss monster and explains that it looks extremely gigantic, like a thousand-year-old tree, and has the strength to back up its appearance. They can only hunt safely and get out of this place if they do not bother it by waking it up. He complies and promises that he won't wake it up. Later on, the team members explain that they are on the most efficient path, but sometimes monsters will appear, so it is best to remain cautious. And the deeper they go into the forest, the stronger the mushroom spores are, so they have kept their detoxifiers on hand because if one were to inhale the spores, the person's health would decrease continuously. They then receive notifications about being exposed to the mushroom spores poison. However, for Jichuk, the black flame top shield is resisting the poison, so he should be fine in the meantime. He then observes everyone's conditions and notices that each member has their own way to protect themselves from the poison. Muchik's way of resisting the poison catches his older brother's attention, for his way is to imbue his entire body with words that will protect him. They then arrive on a stone paved path and from that point onward, the ancient ruins the monsters are going to appear more often, so they have to remain vigilant. The dungeon Luminous Mushroom Forest is a mushroom forest created through the ancient ruins, and sometimes treasures from the ancient ruins can be found there. It is a pretty impressive place, under the condition that you are below level 20 and prepared for the complicated pattern of the mushroom monsters and the annoying poison. Chichiak notices that the sky is becoming dark because the huge mushrooms are covering it, which makes him activate Sol's blessing ability and buff the whole team. Moments later, a wave of mushrooms approaches the team, and they begin to get into formation. Chichiak tells everyone that he will take care of it this time and wants to do some warm-ups. They allow him and plan to give their full support as he pulls out his dual blades and begins the demonstration of his skills. He then activates the blaze walk ability as he approaches the upcoming monsters. The skill being used allows the user to have their agility slightly increase, and all their attacks will possess the fire attribute. He gets into his battle stance and prepares for the upcoming battle. Smoke and ash fill the hallway of the ancient ruins as Jichiok slices each mushroom with blades of fire. He tests out his new twin blades and they cut enemies down so cleanly. The light blade cuts the mushrooms smoothly, which makes Jichiok wonder how the mono blade cuts. He utilizes the blaze steps buff and dashes towards the upcoming mushrooms and slices them down which gains his teammates praise and leaves them in awe. The smell of grilled sliced mushrooms fills the room and sets some cravings for the other teammates before they press forward. Chikchiyuk uses momentum and kills any upcoming monster with ease. He looks back at the others and notices they have begun to make their move too. He then points the body cam in his teammate's direction and begins to do a dialogue for his subscribers. He then explains how scary the provocation skills are and points to the monsters who are chasing them, shifting their attention to his teammates who provoke the monsters. 
They swiftly take out the monsters, earning Jichik's praise by saying their team is formed by a great combination of people who are each dependable in their own way. He then notices the biggest monster eating the smaller monsters and rushes over to give aid to his teammates. He activates the Typhoon Step skill, which increases the user's movement speed. He then pulls out the Mona Blade and starts to emit a dark aura from it before slicing multiple monsters at once. Three hours have passed and bits and pieces of mushrooms can be seen all over the halls and the ancient ruins. Everyone checks out their system window and is impressed by the effects of the monstrous hunting speed, and they never imagine attaining their current leveling up speed. They are hunting up to five times faster than other hunters, but this makes some of the team members nauseous and mana depleted. Chick Ryan notices that the team pushes the healer to his limits, which Jichik agrees to. They assess that they have cleared everything except for the boss, so they can start distributing the loot and wrap up today's hunt. There are more monster corpses than expected, so they have to call for the assistant's assistance. Moments later, the assistants arrive on the scene, and they are surprised by the number of corpses, and the amount of time that was used to clear out the dungeon. Jichik recognizes one of the assistants as his former co-worker, Kim. He runs to him and gives a heartfelt greeting to a friend he has not seen in a long time, and they begin to catch up. The team watches them catch up until John Jihan gathers their attention to begin preparations to return to the middle camp, but gives them more time seeing Jichuk is still busy at the moment, so the others make time for rest now. Muchuk tells the others to go ahead of them and he will return with his brother momentarily. As the others leave for the camp, Jichuk extends his assistance to his former co-workers, but is discouraged by them, for he might be tired or do so good a job that they might become unemployed. The current atmosphere makes Jichik reminisce about the days he worked as an assistant and begin helping them with Mukchik. Moments later, back at the base camp, the assistants are in the middle of processing the monster corpses. Jichik explains to Mukchik that there are magic stones on the roots of the mycelium monsters, so it is important to disassemble them along the grain, and if they try to disassemble them in the opposite direction of the grain, it's going to ruin the materials. He shows off his skills as a former hunter's assistant and impresses his younger brother. Then, out of nowhere, the sky began to rip open and notifications began to pop in. It notifies everyone that the dungeon environment is changing and that they may not be allowed to leave the dungeon. The brothers quickly recognize this phenomenon and the monster corpses begin to mutate, which proves that the dungeon is growing. Everyone's attention is panned out across the area due to the sudden appearance of a dungeon. The sky appeared to be strange and the mushroom monsters began to grow bigger and stronger. The team shows signs of becoming frantic and spits out multiple suggestions for strategizing a plan. They then turn to their leader, John Jihan, for guidance and ask for his opinion. Then, out of nowhere, John Jihan vanishes into thin air, and the team frantically searches for him. Chip Bian then explains that he may have moved to a different area using his skill and assumes his instructions for them are to stand by and wait for any further orders. They then begin to prepare themselves for any upcoming battles before the others arrive. The mutated mushrooms can now be seen chasing a truck that is trying to flee. Mushrooms that approach the truck either get shot down by Muchiuk or get sliced into pieces by Jichuk. The brothers stand on the roof of the truck and do their best to defend the truck that contains the unarmed hunter assistants. Suddenly, something can be heard landing behind Jichuk on the roof. He then turns and realizes that John Jihan appeared and he questions how he appeared out of nowhere. John Jihan begins to assess the situation while avoiding Jichuk's question. The brothers suggest that they have to send the assistants away and make haste. John Jihan pauses for a moment before suggesting something else to the Eon brothers. He suggests that they have to attack where the dungeon is growing right now. The brothers are confused by his statement and begin to question his train of thought. How are they going to conquer a never clear dungeon while worrying for the assistants' safety? John Jihan tells them to calm down and to listen to his explanation. He tells them that the escape route is blocked either way and once the dungeon has completely grown, the enemy's evolution will also be complete. So the only way is to attack the monsters before they are able to complete their evolution process. Chick Ryan also agrees with John Jihan's idea but is suspicious of how calm John Jihan is in his first dungeon. This also makes Jichuk question his superior about how calm he is compared to himself. John Jihan then proceeds to elaborate that their first priority is the team member's survival, especially Jichuk. He promises that he will do his best to not let anyone die. Muchik asks his brother for his opinion on the plan and replies that there is no other way but to follow it through. Time is their lifeline, so they have to make haste before the evolution is finished. They may all die their trying, but they have no choice but to push forward. Moments later, they arrive at the base camp and some of the assistants begin to volunteer to fight, while other assistants discourage the idea since the hunters themselves are struggling. Mr. Kim steps forward, saying that they have no choice but to fight either way since there is no way out and they know how to do a basic battle with basic equipment. 
They are equipped with basic assault rifles that have attack attributes. Mr. Kim explains to Chikchik that if the hunters die, they will die too, so they might as well fight along with them as well, and it is better to have one more helping hand. However, Chikchik disagrees with his former co-workers because there is a high risk of them dying or permanently becoming crippled. Mr. Kim then asks him if there is any other way. They did not want to lose their lives, so becoming persistent is proof that they want to live too. A moment of silence and tension fills the area but is broken when Zhang Jihan steps in and tells Jichik that he has to make a decision quickly as each passing second lowers their possibility of survival. Jichik makes up a plan to save everyone, and is frustrated by the timing of Mr. Kim's arrival to take part in the dungeon's growth. Mr. Kim grabs onto his former junior, Jichik, and asks him to understand that there is no other way but to do what he suggested and let them fight with him. He pauses for a moment, caves in, and allows the assistants to help with the fight. Jikyuk suggests that he should drive since it will be difficult for Mr. Kim since the dungeon is growing. Now Zhang Jihan tells everyone to prepare themselves and their equipment, for they will be departing shortly. As assault rifles are passed down to each hunter's assistant, the hunters begin strategizing. They explain that the truck is made so they can cover the hunter so that they can run away during emergency situations. The roof and parts of the wall can be lowered down and the assistants can shoot from the inside. The plan is for Muchuk to provide a covering fire and Biohana will sit in front and act as a guide with her searching skills. Chichuk then assigns Jibiuk to make walls if the monsters are ever able to grab hold of the trucks. Since Chichuk does not know John Jihan's skills, he gives him an all-rounder role. They accept their roles and will do their best to protect all the assistants, and they must do their best to avoid any casualties. He then whispers to Chik Riang to become his eyes. Moments later, they are rushing to the source of the dungeon growth while running over some of the mutated mushroom monsters. Everyone in the back of the truck is doing their best to keep the monsters away from the truck, while the people in the front focus on driving. Bilhana then signals and directs Jichuk where to drive, and they are starting to feel the struggle. Physical impact without any mana barely gives the monsters any damage. At this rate, if a giant mushroom monster appears, the truck will be flipped over. Jikshuk then commands Chuk Rang to look for skills that he can recommend for this situation. Chuk Rang suggests protection blessings and wide area protective shields. Jikyuk thinks there is something lacking in those skills. He needs something more certain to break away from this situation. Chuk Rang suggests that there is a skill that can control the vehicle using mana, which Jikyuk asks him to search for further. The Soul Driver skill costs 62,000 likes, and it allows him to control the vehicle by putting mana into it. There are no restrictions as long as it is something one can ride on. The user can use a skill booster while driving to temporarily accelerate or use it as a weapon. Shikyuk is skeptical about the price and curses the person who sets the price tags. He has to spend all his remaining money to purchase the skill, but he has no choice since the situation they are in urgently needs it. He learns the skill and begins to drink a vial that contains a mana recovery potion. He is then notified that his mana recovery speed will increase significantly for the next three minutes. He then tells everyone to stop defending and to hold on. Bulhana is confused by his command and then notices a sudden surge of energy pouring out of the truck. Jikyuk links his own skills to everyone in the truck and buffs them with all his skills as he activates the boosters. The speeds and damage that the truck is causing can be compared to a ballistic missile that has no choice but to reach its target regardless of what is in its path. For each monster killed by being run over by the truck, Jichiuk gains skill proficiency for the Soul Driver skill and levels it up as he drives. The system notifies Jichiuk that the gods are watching him carefully as he plows through a horde of mutated mushroom monsters. They also begin to donate him thousands of likes and truck passengers' reactions to his skills are also giving him likes. Chik Rang explains that 1,000 likes are the base unit for the gods, but this is not the time to think about that, and asks his master to focus on the road. Buell Hanana misses something in the distance. A large, shadowy figure can be seen in the distance and Bielhanna identifies it as the dungeon's boss, a giant mutated mushroom monster bearing its teeth towards the hunters. Jishet receives a notification from the system that notifies him that the currently growing boss, the Nightmare Mushroom, has identified him as he speeds up in its direction. He receives a like from the boss and the system notifies him that receiving likes from bosses is a good award that will not only give him a like, but also obtain information. He notices something wrong with the boss as it begins to change from its original red color into a more purplish hue. Chuk Ryang thinks about it for a moment and concludes that it is trying to change into a poison trait monster. This situation was not favoring Chikchuk and his party since the boss pattern is already impossible to attack right now, and it is even going to have a poison trait. He then speeds up the truck and tells everyone to hold on and fasten their seatbelts. He then yells at Muchik to cast a buff on the truck, for he is planning on ramming the boss with the truck. 
He asks everyone to place their faith in him. For the truck is currently their best weapon. Everyone in the back looks at each other for their thoughts and then Zhang Jihan explains that there is a chance of them winning with that plan if they imbue more mana into the truck. Mushuk puts his faith in his big brother, then kneels down to the floor of the truck and begins casting a buff on it as they advance towards the boss. With the support of acceleration and weight that Muchik wrote about, the truck is running towards the boss at an even more frightening speed. Shin Quan also begins casting a skill and recites the incantation. He delivers a defense-type blessing to Jibiuk, who sits on top of the truck as we speak. Reassured by the defense skill, Jibiuk concentrated all the reinforcement power as a tanker on the front part of the truck. Jikyuk speeds up the truck and launches it into the face of the Nightmare Mushroom boss. The truck was about to land inside the mouth of the Nightmare Mushroom when, all of a sudden, the system notifies Jikyuk that John Jihan has used an unknown acceleration skill, which vanishes the truck. Jikyuk tells Chiuk Rang about the censorship of John Jihan's skill and worries that it might be an error. Chiuk Rang explains that it is not an error, but rather a filter. When it is a superior trait that we cannot recognize, a filter is created. He then notices that the Nightmare Mushroom is suddenly moving slowly. He then checks his watch, tells him that they are moving normally, and questions what John Jihan did to them. They made an impact with the Nightmare Mushroom and managed to penetrate through it like a bullet. The mana that enveloped the truck dissipated and began to slowly drop down. The truck crashes down as the Nightmare Mushroom's penetrated corpse tilts over and drops. Chichiuk crawls out of the wreckage and asks if everyone is alright. Muchuk screams from the back of the truck informing his brother that the assistants are alright with no serious injuries, probably thanks to Shin Quan's protection. He then proceeds to check on his other team members and finds Shin Quan hunched over due to mana depletion but not injured. The others call for his attention, letting him know that Jibiyak was not in good condition as she puked out blood. He checks on her, and begins to activate his healing skill on her, which will temporarily aid her until she gets checked out of the hospital, and then he runs out of mana. He then asks the others if the boss is finally dead. They say it is surely dead since they broke through it, but Jikyuk clarifies because there is no notification about its death. Then, out of nowhere, the system notifies everyone that the dungeon boss, Nightmare Mushroom's evolution has ended incompletely, and that it has given birth to the great demon of Nightmare, meaning that the dungeon is not yet conquered, and her fate lies in the hands of another demon. An ominous dark figure walks out in a cloud of smoke and mana and raises its wings as it approaches hunters. It begins to roar and makes its presence known to anyone still alive in the dungeon. Jikyuk realizes that the demon is not the same demon as before but rather an evolved version of it. He needs to think of a plan or else everyone will die if the demon is not defeated, but his remaining strength has depleted. Chik Ryang tells his master that he should not meddle for the sake of his life. Jikyuk is also aware of that factor, but everyone else will die unless they kill the demon. Jikyuk tries to gather his strength but only backfires, which makes him lose his balance. He is caught by his brother and is told not to overexert himself. John Jihan tells him to listen to his younger brother and that there is still one person with good health left in the team. John Jihan steps forward, has a lengthy monologue about how he will fight the demon, and tells everyone to take cover. Muchik and the rest of the team who can walk take care of the injured. They feel the world shaking due to the shockwaves of John Jihan's current battle. Chichik seriously questions the identity of the mysterious John Jihan the hunter who's fighting a demon stronger than the greater demon from the previous incident, and also that it would normally take a group effort to face a single demon, yet he is fighting an evolved one by himself. For some reason, Jichuk feels like time has slowed down for him, and it is slowing down as we speak. He asks his brother what time it is and he compares it to his watch and both their times are different. This phenomenon confuses Jichuk until he hears footsteps approaching them. They see John Jihan walking out of the fog of mana, covered in dirt and with some minor scratches all over his body. They are all so shocked and awed by his victory that they do not know how to react and just stare at the approaching John Jihan. Chikyuk acknowledges the mysterious John Jihan as a strong hunter and infers that his ability is definitely something to do with time. They finally get the system notifications that notify the people when they conquer a dungeon, and the allocation of rewards finally begins. Chikyuk's party came out of the dungeon safely, and John Jahan's company staff have been on standby and handled the matter quietly without informing the media. Hunters and assistants board a designated bus to go to the hospital. Reassured that they survived, only then could they fall into a deep sleep one by one. They are later brought to Sewell Hospital once more, and there we see the Eom brothers going through their dungeon rewards. Chikyuk received a pedant for the team reward, the great accessory artifact called the Luminous Fairy Clip, when equipped, will increase all stats by 10 points. It also comes with increased mana speed and mana storage capacity, 
both by 10%. The pendants are rewards given to the top six contributors, meaning everyone in the party must have gotten one. Another peculiar notification catches Jichik's eye and asks for consultation from Cheek Rang. It says luck plus five and that additional skills are gained when six pendants are gathered in one dungeon. It also explains the skill Fairy's Footsteps, which decreases enemy attack by 10% and increases alley attack by 10%. Chiuk Rang explains that the term luck does not mean fortune in this situation, but rather a hidden figure in the system. There is not only luck in the hidden numbers, but there is also talent and personality, and there is no way to increase them through effort, so the system does not notate them. Later on, Jichik unlocks two random unique skills and acquires skills that are only given in dungeons related to magic advancement. He acquired the Magic Golem Crafting Skill and the Arc Dragon Mana's Heart. He thought that he would not need the Arc Dragon Mana's Heart because of the overlapping skill, but after hearing from Chiuk Rang, it would evolve when a duplicate skill was acquired. He then decided to evolve the two cores into a skill that gathers mana more quickly called the Double Core. And on top of that, from a random unique item box, he gains the Ring of Troll Regeneration as his last reward. Chiuk Chik asks Muchyuk if he got any good rewards, and Mushyuk shows him a necklace that can create five protective shields a day, which is perfect for him since he's a firearms user. He also explains a skill that he called Double Shot, which allows him to shoot two bullets at once, and if he uses two guns, he can shoot four bullets at once. This makes Jichik's body itch for excitement, and he wants to recover as quickly as possible to be able to test his new skills and items. Letters flowing out of a book that Mushyuk is currently reading. He then explains that he has been absorbing the letters. Originally, it was an independent living thing that could stand by itself, but it is now attached to Muchuk's body as a skill, and since it is a living thing, Muchuk thought he should feed it by reading books. Chik Ryan confirms that Mindset is correct, and that is how the parasitic beam Text of Chaos is, and it has been stabilized in the form of the skill through the system, so there should be no complications with his health. Chikyak thinks about it for a moment, then again maintenance should guarantee safety, and since the system does not lie, he can rest assured. When he thinks about it, Muchik still has not chosen his guardian deity. He replies that a lot of gods have contacted him after the incident, but a lot of the time, he is the one at a disadvantage according to the contracts. Chik Ryang then inserts himself and elaborates to his master that it is good for a hunter to choose a guardian deity as soon as possible in normal cases, but this does not apply to Muchik's case. Jishik clarifies his explanation by simply asking if that means that choosing a god as late as possible is better when you have a great skill set. Chik Ryang confirms it to be correct and that in Muchik's case, it is better to make an advantageous contract for him after he gets stronger because the text of chaos has that much worth. Muchuk then tells his brother that he already purchased the magic golem materials that he has talked about despite not knowing what he plans on making, but he used up a lot of money in the process. Later on in the underground alchemy room, he begins to test his magic golem craft skill and activates the ability. A bunch of systems popped up in front of Chichuk, and he was asked which floor plan he would like to choose. Chik Ryan recommends the alchemy floor plan. Crafting skills have overlapping areas, and if he puts that point to good use, he can increase their effectiveness. He then activates the alchemy skill and notification lets him know that an overlapping area has been found and asks him if he would like to activate it. Chikyuk accepts and he is notified that both magic golem crafting and alchemy of Scrooge are being activated at the same time. The activation process has completed and he has acquired a hidden recipe. He gained the magic golem blueprint, bike which allows even a small amount of mana to generate an amount of output comparable to that of a magic golem. The system notifies him that he already has the required components and asks him if he would like to use them, which he agrees to without hesitation. At that moment, Jichik's hands started moving on their own, assembling the bike. Because magic golem crafting starts and ends with mana, he could properly see the effects of setting the arcane magic circle of magic recovery in place in advance. Moments later, the mono bike has finished its assembly, and with every successful crafting without losing mana more than once, additional performance is granted. The monobike burns the owner's mana to advance instead of fuel, and it can run both on and off-road, amplifying the user's riding skills. He then acquires the skill to summon and unsummon the bike, which the user can pull out and place in its own subspace. He also acquired the mana reduction skill, where the same force can be achieved with 50% the mana of an ordinary magic golem. And lastly, he acquires the acceleration skill, where the higher the speed, the greater the skill damage. He also acquires an additional skill in the form of Mana Influence, which assimilates with the rider's skill. He then takes Chuk Rang for a test ride on the bike and shoots a video. Not long after, Chichuk shared a video titled The Essence of an Outdoor Drive. It may be because the drive skill has its limits, 
but there are a lot of comments predicting Chichuk's end. The Hunter Agency prepared to sue them, but God 2 was a foreign company, so it was not easy. But on the contrary, this incident provoked Jichek's fandom, and it became an opportunity for them to unite, so it was quickly taken care of. Moments later, we see a woman sitting in front of her computer, waiting for Jichek's live stream. The woman is revealed to be eldest daughter of a Shinsung group named Shin Jurin. When Jichek held an auction through headhunting in the past, she was the one who made the counteroffer. She then scrolls through photos of him on his bike ride, and she only gathered them because she just needed a refresher and not because of any emotional feelings. It is different from romantic feelings, but a feeling is not much different from it, and why is that? She could not get her eyes off of Chikyuk. A slight sense of elation, thrill, uneasiness, and even anger. As if getting hit in a car accident, a certain emotion was hitting her heart strongly. Later on, we can see Chikyuk vlogging about the story about the essence of the devil. He then hands the essence to Chik Ryan and reassures the chat that it is safe for him to consume. Chik Ryan consumes the essence, bursts into a flash of light, and is in the process of evolution. The surrounding mana and energy were ecstatic and trembled around the area of evolution. With the evolution completed, Chuk Ryan can now actively intervene in battles to help its matter, and it absorbs the owner's mana and substantiates it, showing the ability of lower middle class monsters. The live chatters express their love for the results of Chuk Ryan's evolution. By acquiring the summoned monobike and leveling up Chuk Ryan, Chuk Chuk gained a bit more confidence. In order to check out his new power, he looked for a deserted field and moved there. He arrived at the top of one mountain, where private houses and military bases were wiped out and turned into a monster field. He started the personal live stream there, he tried connecting the live channel using the omnidirectional filming skill, and the broadcast went well without any problems. Together with the viewer's donations, the solo play begins. They begin hunting down monsters in the area. Chik Ryang initiates the hunt by pouncing on the monsters and damaging them by biting them, which excites the viewers. Chichik, on the other hand, jumps up with his bike, lands in the middle of the group of monsters, and pulls out his twin blades. He slices down the monsters in his way as he rides around on his bike, which makes the viewers hype up for the fight. Moments later, at the Jungle Group headquarters inside the training area, we see personnel updating a muscular man about a magic golem that has never been seen before. The muscular man is revealed to be Jung Sugi, who is an ability user who can purify water and control it freely. He is the son of the eldest son of Jungle Group's owner. The stats and donations that Jichuk is getting for his live streams impressed him for someone on his level. He wonders why a guy like Jichuk ended up with a guy like Jung Jihan and infers that it might be because of the contract conditions. He does not like starting conflict between family members but still wants to know if it is still possible to recruit him to his side under any conditions. He does not care about Jung Jihan for he harmed his father, so he will do his best to make Jung Jihan pay while taking something of his. He then sends his staff out, proceeds to continue with his training, and wonders what it would be like if he and Chikyuk sparred. Back to Jichuk's perspective, we see him finishing off a monster and a particular viewer watches him with intent. Zhang Jihan wanted Jichuk to rest, but he held back because it would be more dangerous if he went without his knowledge and went to a place where he could not reach him. He would prefer if he could support him where he could see Jichuk because he would be able to predict the pattern of his death. Moments later, he receives a call from his sister, Big Ajong, who wonders what he will be doing to the stock list. He is curious why she asked about that when she is not interested in it at all. She tells him that the brothers should shoot a mukbang video. In other words, she might want to have management rights for the brothers. He wonders why there is such a sudden interest in the two of them, and he tells her he will think about it. It is revealed that one of the reasons was because Fangdral Kim Young he was interested in meeting her idol. We are going through memories with Shin Jorin and John Biga. But they studied in the USA, both of them attended the same university and were party queens. They had overflowing money, and both of them liked extravagant things. Both started to share something similar to friendship around the time before the graduation. Shin Jorin thought that John Bega's drone technology would be able to help the Shinsun group grow. It started when Shin Jorin thoughtlessly went to her house and found John Bega waking up from hard drinking in a room filled with trash and men. Shin Jurin believes that Jung Biga is wasting her genius brain from the constant partying and starts an argument. Jung Biga's wild lifestyle turns Shin Jurin's jealousy into anger, and that moment was the start of their friendship. We are then back in the present, where the two geniuses are discussing their ideal types. Shin Jurin elaborates that Jichik does not fit her lover criteria and expresses that she can only see herself as a fan rather than a lover. In the phone call Biga had with her brother, it was about forcing him to give up his investment shares for now and asking her to join her. It was meant to be a joke, but Shin Jorin took it literally. Which makes Jiang Biga just stand there and stare at her. 
Later on at the Eom house, Jichip goes through his likes and computes how many he gained from the gods and from the live stream. He then asks Shuk Rang for his opinion if he is lacking in something, to which he responds by telling him there is none. It is really rare for a less than six-month-old hunter to annihilate an entire village of monsters at level 80 and above, but he may have to be careful in the future. He will earn many more enemies as he gains more attention. He responds by saying that he does not gain any likes if he does not gain any attention, so he will just have to put up with gaining more enemies, which means he has no choice but to get stronger. He then asks Shuk Rang if there is any other aspect he needs more training on. Shuk Rang suggests that it would be a great idea to aim to draw out his sword key, because it can only be used freely to enable long-range attacks. In addition, most of the opponent's defenses can be ignored with Sword Kai. However, if he uses this, there is a fatal flaw, which is the time limit. If it is an enemy that you cannot get rid of with a single blow, he will be defenseless to the opponent's attacks within the cooldown. It will help him to some extent to secure mobility with the bike, but is better to have a better means of attack. Sword Kitty can allow Jichuk to have access to multiple types of range attacks. He will have to break his bones for this, so he will have to be prepared for the training. Chichiuk accepts his suggestion, and just like that, hellish training for the sake of a new ability begins. Moments later, Jichuk is offered a whole floor for training through Zhang Jihan's considerations. Before entering real training, he acquired some skills that he liked. He purchased a bunch of martial arts skill books recommended by Chi Kring. And with his guidance, Jichuk goes through hellish training to gain the strength needed to prepare for future battles. Training is a long-term race, and in order to get enlightened, he did not miss the live streams even when he trains every day. And since he is combining mukbang with cute themes, the synergy is doubled. At some point, one month passed with him doing his training and live broadcasts in parallel. He started to see the results of the countless steps and sword wielding. All his efforts led to him pulling out his sword key without the support of skills. This is the end of leveling up with thumbs up part 1 to part 3. Thank you keep watching the content from this channel. Remember to like and subscribe to keep you updated with our latest content. See you in the next part.